Well, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this now extremely late version of the first on tap, which is now being called Unexpected After Party. Uh, I am Dark Hour, also known as Russ. I'm going to be bringing in two of the members of the drunk posting, the critical drinker drunk, drunk posting admin team shortly. And uh, we're just going to have some fun, see where it goes. We have a couple of topics ahead of us and uh, just going to have to see uh, where the night takes us. So first I'm going to bring in Chris, aka the blue, blue collar loser. <laughs> Thanks, thing called blue collar. That's awesome. Uh, blue collar. Did I say blue yeah. collar? You said blue collar. <laughs> I, you know what it was? I was like trying to like, there's something like tickling me and I was like yeah. trying to knock it off without being too obvious. It yeah. was like, As people can tell us, I'm whoring myself out with the look, the uh, yeah. t-shirt that says her hair. Nah, it'll be fine. And I got a official look. Scottish accent. I got to know, look, the drinker recommends and yeah, if I he receives a... this. Um, I, I, I actually told him, I mean, I don't know if he's read it, but I messaged him. Yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, you want to uh, give a quick introduction to yourself and then... Uh, yeah, basically. I didn't we'll, do mine. I'll do mine after, oh, I guess. Well, That's just fine. like you, about it was actually, I made my official channel launch on uh, June 9th. So 69 is my anniversary. And uh, just like, I think, ah. yeah, just like you, I've been a fan of his for so many years. 69. And just, and one day someone just like, dude, just launch a channel, listen to him and guys like Gary and Geeks and Gamers and stuff. So I figured, screw it, I'll just launch a channel. I've talked to him on Patreon about five, six times, and he's been super fucking supportive, giving me some advice. And I finally hit 100 subscribers. And like he says, just keep doing it, doing it. And I finally, I made my, um, I call it the Woke of Power. So I just sat here and I, I binged the entire season of Rings of Power with a whole bottle of vodka. Well, and I, that's, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I, you probably needed to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and I could barely speak as it is. So my sister and my friends love it because I'd watch episode one, I drink, I give a five minute recap. And episode mm -hmm. two and recap, and of course, by episode nine, the bottle's gone, and I'm just like this nerd thing. <laughs> and I hit three thousand views, and I'm like, oh shit! And even oh, Drake... you were the one you you super chatted him the other day yeah. about that. Yeah, yep. I remember that. Yeah. And that's um, and that's what he said. Sometimes it just takes one video because even he said it himself. You know this. He um his his was Captain Marvel because he had a yes. very low sub count, and he does Captain Marvel. And next, you know, bam, he's got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Yeah. So I guess I mean he's he also has a great character. So it's like... oh yeah. But, let me uh, let me bring in Wes real quick because he's looking angry over there in, in, in the waiting room. So, <laughs> how you doing, Wes? The the illustrious leader of the, or maybe the the infamous leader of Jack the drunk posting group. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, how are you? What's going on, guys? You guys can hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Sound, yeah. Sound good. Sound good. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Um. So, what's the? We're introducing ourselves. I was. Yeah. I'll do my intro last because I forgot to do mine. Like. A yeah. Moron. Wes, you go to the bathroom, drinker goes, he signs off the second you got up. <laughs> I swear yeah. to God. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Now, I went to get my thinking hat because I couldn't remember what we were. I had that brain cramp earlier. I was going to remind you guys, yeah, we do. We are international and we got people that are in Hong Kong. We got people that are in uh, China. We got people New in New Zealand. We got several New people. Zealand, oh, Jesus. you know, everywhere. So the yeah. time frame doesn't, it doesn't really matter. People huh. listen to it when they feel like listening to it. But yeah, I'm Wes. Huh. Uh, I run the group, uh, took it over from Tom uh, about a year ago. Yeah, it was about wow. this time last year. Shut I'd up. been in the group for about a year and a half before that, um, just doing mod stuff, uh, the one that got zucked. And mm -hmm. basically, uh, I was working on my books when I got out of the joint. And uh, I, someone keyed me into, I read a couple of Will's books when I was in the joint. Um, and someone told me at a YouTube channel, uh, and I was looking through it and I saw he had a Rocky video during a, a Thanksgiving uh, Rocky marathon they had on TV. And I watched yeah. the video about it and I was like, God damn, this guy has switched on. He, he knows what he's talking about. And then I fell down the rabbit hole of all of his stuff <laughs> and then just started uh, doing what I do now, which is, you know, I listen to his stuff when I'm at work. If I, if he doesn't have anything live or anything current, I'll listen to stuff that um, uh, he's got that's older. I mean, he basically, opened up youtube for me because i really just yeah. before will and before looking at his videos a few years ago i thought youtube was just for funny cat videos and stuff like that i didn't really do a whole lot of youtube and yeah. uh and now like you know you get the algorithm you get recommended and so a lot of different youtube people that i watch i don't really watch i don't really stream that much we'll talk about that later but yeah. uh the few things that i do stream i spend more time on youtube than i do on anything else 
Yeah, I actually canceled so. my Sling subscription recently because I was like, I'm not barely using this damn thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you realize I used this time last year. I can tell you right now, uh, I had five subscriptions to streaming services. Now I have one. So no. I'm trying to get down to that number. I'm trying to get down to <laughs> zero, actually. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, you you like to listen to to old stuff from the drinker, but you know, I had to force you to listen to the one that I was on. <laughs> so you know, well, I mean, is this something you want to get into right now, or? <laughs> Or you I mean, it's, do- it's my best way to introduce myself. Okay, you know, like, okay. Yeah. So for anyone uninitiated, uh, I will tell you right now, um, Chris has been my on my admin team for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, Russell, Dark Horror over here. Dark Horror? <laughs> it's our. <laughs> Excuse me. Dark Horror. Oh. I just want to say Dark Horror. I don't know why I want to say it like that. Oh, you, you called me a blue collar. Dark so. Horse, and it just came out like. I mean, I, I'm I'm a bit of a whore sometimes, but mm-hmm. <laughs> dark hours. I have a regional accent out here in Kansas, so there's that. <laughs> Apparently, uh, hours are whores. It's like what 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 time is it? Well, it's about uh, two whores past noon. Hey, so. they're they're working hard. They're working hard. Anyway, so, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he had asked. Uh, I think Chris, you remember this? He had asked if we would allow him to put on uh, uh, something for his YouTube channel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. initially i was okay with it and then katie kind of checked me a little bit the other admin was like well we don't really do that and she was blah, blah, like, blah. and then i had a few conversations with him and i found out he was the one that did last action hero literally yeah. the only drinker video i did not watch literally <laughs> because i hate that movie so much with a fiery passion <laughs> and i was like but he seemed like such a nice guy i'm like you know what yeah i was working i was i had one of this, the you act know, is I just, working yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so I, uh, I I take little breaks when I'm writing. I'll take little breaks and kind of zone out, do YouTube. I try not to do too much, yeah. um, but um, I, I was zoning. I was like, you know what? I took a break from my writing one day, and I was like, I'm going to pop on his video. I think it was shortly after that. I was like, I really liked how you you went back and forth with uh, with Will. Yeah. I thought you did a great nice. job, um, and he's not an easy person to keep up with. I mean, he's very gracious, yes. and, uh, but he's so awesome. Oh, yeah. So nice. loquacious, you know, he's such a great, um, you know, vocabulary. He's very learned, and yes. uh, it, it, it's it would be hard to to keep up with him because he's he's really like I said before, he's switched on, and he he can navigate really well. He's he's one of those yeah. authors that it, it's been said uh, that some authors are not good speakers, but I think he's definitely yeah. both. I think he's a good author, and I think he's a great speaker. Mm. So he, um, yeah, I, I was really is. impressed. And, and I mean, I appreciate that you said that, um, you know, I go back, I've watched it like a couple of times after, cause like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I have to, I, 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 and I don't watch it for like vanity, but I'm not like, yeah, like, look at yeah, me. I it's do. More, me. <laughs> it's more like, I have to, I have to like go back and check and be like, did that actually fucking happen? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> you know um, conversely, just real quick. I, all the super chats that I've sent him in where he's like mentioned me and talked about the Facebook group. I, yeah. I clip, I clip those. Mm-hmm. And I like play him at my bar because I'm like, awesome. look at me, look at he, look, look how, look how he's talking about me, you know, because I'm conceited. So apparently, <laughs> sexfind.biz has uh, hot girls here for free. Hey, so, sure. uh, I don't even know how the hell that happened. Let's remove <laughs> that uh, block user, whoever the I, hell you I, are. I, I've been seeing it too. Um, when I, I commented on his last video with the whole thing, like, hey, here's the drinker DMs on Instagram. He's been getting a lot of spam bots too mm-hmm. on his channel. Yeah, that's amazing. Apparently, our first viewer was a spam bot. I didn't right. know that, that. I didn't. I didn't know spam bots actually uh, attacked. Um, I mean, it's our first viewer on here. It's. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the YouTube channel. I actually should probably go check yeah. that. Um, but uh, before before I switch over to that, yeah, just uh, to piggyback on what you were saying, Wes. Yeah, I was. I was on the show. I have started my own channel. That's actually what we're streaming through right now. Yeah. Still trying to figure out what the hell I want to do with it. Um, <laughs> had to teach myself. Well. I can't take full credit. My partner, Gwell, who's also on the channel, taught me some basics on how to edit. And in three three weeks, I was like, got to teach myself as much as I can. And I'm, I actually have my first video essay coming out very soon. I'm super excited about it. You guys have seen parts of it. So yeah. I'm going to just double check what our uh, what it looks like on our, if we have people watching, because I kind of forgot that we have to. Uh... <laughs> so let's... Let's, let's pull up our, uh, our our topics for the day, shall we? And I will just do a screen share real quick because that's cool. the easiest way to do it for us. That's because, awesome, I like that. Because I, like I can't because I'm an idiot and didn't realize that you can't use PNGs on here. Yeah. So 
Um, yes, yeah, so I actually just finished Violent Night earlier today, and I thoroughly mm. enjoyed it. I'm uh, excited to uh, talk about this. Uh, mm. Which one of you, you know, I, Wes, which one of you yeah. saw it first, actually? Uh, I think Chris saw it before. Okay, then we're gonna, we'll yeah. start with Chris <laughs> and, and, and talking to him. I'm going to remove I, I ma- made a video, too. So. Oh, perfect. You? You're, the, you're the guy, yeah. you're the guy to, uh, <laughs> to start off. So I, I was for the violent night. I called like when um basically all drinkers extra shots and also to me Jeremy Johns because we talked about this Russell where Jeremy Johns doesn't write essays like how Will does. So I call them my lazy reviews. It's like I talk for five minutes, edit, and let's get out of here. So violent nights one of the films where it you wouldn't need a twenty minute video because it's not there's not enough substance there and that that's a good thing. It's as, as soon as I walked out and Jeremy Johns said it, it's Die Hard meets Santa Claus. <laughs> It's simple as that. Yeah, Accurate. you know, yeah, it's Accurate. a little bit. It's got a little bit of, of, of Santa, yeah. bad Santa as well in there. Mm. Well, no, I thought it was it was a ton of fun. It was like the R factor and David Harbour. This is again, we go through this now with you can't avoid it. You know, I've seen the guy's Twitter. Just I don't give a fuck about his Twitter. The guy's cool. Yeah, I, mean, I like him. He's he was a decent Hellboy. Love him in Stranger Things, and he did a great job as a Santa Claus that just kicking ass and taking names like. <laughs> Yeah, it, he, yeah. I don't know what, much about what he says on Twitter. I tend not to really worry yeah. about Twitter. I follow like maybe eight people. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I I can't agree more with you on Violent Night. It definitely had the Die Hard feel to it. It had yeah. actually I I when I was watching it, so I only watched it earlier today. Mm. I'm completely legally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like that was the way that's, that's the way we're keeping it. You know? Yeah. But um, I could have seen it actually ahead of time at New York Comic Con and I opted mm. not to. And I actually am sad that I didn't because uh, that, I, that I that I didn't go to see it because it was actually pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Um, and but the it the first like 45 minutes played out like almost beat for beat exactly like Die Hard. Yeah. And I, I was I thought to myself like I wonder if this was originally supposed to be like a Die Hard remake script that somebody was writing and then they mm. just kind of like merged it with something else afterwards. Mm. Uh, that's kind of the feeling I got because it definitely like about halfway through, it's it switches like oh, yeah. really a lot like the 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 origin story of Santa Claus and all this stuff. It's, <laughs> it it takes a hard turn off off the freeway and. It like so. I have a feeling it was kind of like two movie treatments that they just kind of went, okay, let's put these together and make something out of it, and it mm. kind of worked actually. I mean, it, it was you know, there's a lot of things. I don't know how like how much how much you guys want to go into spoiler territory with it, but I like I thought the violence uh, level was was pretty good. Well, the rules of the group say that uh, we give it a week, so it just came out what Wednesday, right? Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday tech. It's been six days. I mean, yeah. has it been six days? It, it's been out for a week. Because I seen it. I seen it. I seen it Thursday. So this is Wednesday. So it's. I actually, mean, actually, this is Thursday. It's been a week. I seen a week ago. Yeah. I mean, and also we usually make the rule like if the drinker's talking about it, you know, fuck it. So yeah. I'm. I'm. I would assume he would love this movie. I just. I can assume it. I mean, I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll find out. Yeah. Later. Yeah. He's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna love this movie yeah. for sure. Absolutely. I actually oh, yeah. stayed relatively sober watching it last night because I didn't want to have to get up and piss 20 times. So I only yeah. bought one uh, tall drink because they serve alcohol at the movie theater mm-hmm. now, which is yeah. another thing. I pre I, I, I was amazed. I did pregame a little bit. Too. Yeah, I did. I did pregame. <laughs> but uh, when I got out of the joint and I saw they they uh, serve alcohol in the theater, I was like, what? What? Oh, yeah. But but of course, I was on probation, so I wasn't allowed to drink. So, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> been there i'm back i'm out i'm out i'm out in the world and it's a better place <laughs> and then they and then and then they said oh covid everybody's on lockdown and i was like mm. ah, ah that's like yeah. that's like taking your fucking sister to prom <laughs> Jesus. i mean in the right state that might be actually I, I did live in florida i did live in florida at the time so you know and, and the further from miami the, on the further on the panhandle you are generally that's that's considered less and less uh inappropriate so <laughs> florabama yeah. shore baby florabama, florabama shore what? but yeah i mean i thoroughly with violent night i i actually at the end since we're allowed to spoil you know like the whole like uh death revival that happens at the end yeah. um that actually kind of got to me like i was like oh because it's like i a part of me was like 
you know, he's been, I think he said he's alive for like 1100 years or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, clearly he like kind of wants to die. Like, it's almost <laughs> like, uh, like I'm just done with this shit kind of style. <laughs> and I was like, maybe that's for the best. Like, you know, and, but it turned out, you know, they can't do that. <laughs> I love, you know, it was a mechanic I loved in the movie. Uh, was the usage of the list mm. like every time they would open that up? If you, I know you guys saw it in a the theater, uh, but I would pause it actually. And um, oh, when shit. you get a chance to see it, uh, it actually has like what they did. Oh shit! And like you know why they're they're on I which saw list? Yeah, yeah, I'm I sure you that. caught it briefly. Um, but if you yeah. stop it, like and like dissect, my favorite one is the little girl is on the, one of the reasons she's on the nice list is uh, invited the weird kid to her birthday. <laughs> Actually, what it said. It I was, didn't see that. That was the last that. one that pops up. It's like a split nice. second frame. It's like, yeah. and That's um, nice. It's that always was attention a, to detail, you know. Yeah, it was. It was a cool. Then there was like like one. Uh, I couldn't quite make out what it said about uh, John Leguizamo's character, but it was, he was one of the reasons he was on the naughty list was uh, like he broke his mom's something. I couldn't make out the other word. It was like I no, think hate. it said he, he broke his mom's slow cooker. Yeah. And then uh, he had some bad stuff on. He like he killed his uncle. <laughs> yeah. He like broke. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it was like all. It was like it, it was like a list that just kept going of things. Yeah, he did. his was his was bad. His yeah. was bad. They should have put. They should have put on. He keeps accusing everybody of fucking cultural appropriation. Or whatever, but I, mean, I was yeah. actually just about to say that. You know, it almost made me forget how annoying he's been for like the last like he's been really annoying lately i don't know yeah. what's up with them because he's been my favorite actor and he's played italians in three uh. fucking major films I can three top, major films I can, he's played italians. I can top that about the cultural appropriation thing with him i know he's already played white people or italians or however you want to say it mm. i mean technically yeah. being italian doesn't necessarily mean you're white but um, mm. he used to say he was Puerto Rican, and then like years ago, his father like came out and was like, "No, we're not Puerto Rican at all." Like, I don't know why he's at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. <laughs> like, I was like, "What are, so, What is his ethnicity? Do you know? Did he? I say? think he, I think it said he was he was either Costa Rican or Colombian or something like oh. that. Uh, I mean, what's wrong with that? I mean, no, I, it was I, it was because he was just playing. Uh, it was he was playing off of this whole. Hey, we have we have two people watching. Mm. Oh, how am I watching twice? <laughs> what? Oh no, that, that's probably because it's my um my channel. That's probably what it is. Mm. One of it. Uh, uh, just just so you know, uh, I think somebody a couple people clicked on early, and because uh, I had one of my army buddies was yeah, like yeah. the link isn't working. I'm like no, you just you clicked on it too soon, buddy. Just yeah. So it's a possibility. I mean, it's like I said, it could be a. Up. It could it could be a thing that we do. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm gonna have uh, it's it, gonna be, know. it's gonna be a um, a recording anyway, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, like the whole like John Leguizamo thing back to there. It's like he's he's been probably. I mean, I don't know who's said dumber shit recently. Uh, Jennifer him, Lawrence or him or Jennifer Lawrence, <laughs> but um, Jennifer uh, Lawrence. Yeah, oh, yeah. She, I mean, uh, the the poor the poor girl only has like a seventh grade education. I mean, come on, mm. like it's being generous. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. There's uh, there's not much more to say about Violent Night. I would just say that anybody who hasn't seen it and was kind mm. of like on the fence about it, skeptical, uh, it's it's definitely worth checking out. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm gonna just, have to be the dickhead. I'm gonna be oh, the God. dick. Here it comes. I mean, what else is new? He's gonna piss in the punch bowl. Like. I'm pissing in the punch bowl. Okay. <laughs> Overall, I liked it. Okay. This is my final thought. I'm gonna, and I'm not one of those people that like one little thing's messed up, and I'm just gonna be like, ah, okay. But I'm gonna mm. tell you that me being married to uh, my first marriage of the three uh, was a black girl, and we had a couple kids. I'm gonna mm. tell you, it's not very common. It doesn't happen all the time. I know RTN Zed. I know he's, you know, his wife's African American or whatever they call after me, you know, in, in that country. Uh, 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 there's a uh, 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 Abby's. We call them for Aborigines. Well, that's that's Australia. okay. Right, right, right. So the the fact that they threw that in there bothers me because they threw it in there as if you know, and and they don't, you know, this is a rich, well to do family that is so worried yeah. about standing in the right place in the house because yeah. 
Uh, well, at least most... one of them is. And I think it was kind of like a. Uh, it was like a. Hey, what's up? Uh, Reed Design, how you doing? Uh, it, I think uh, that... Reed, uh, that's Ian Reed. He used to be one of the um, mods on the old. Uh, oh, the well, old, the old welcome. Page. You are. You actually oh. are our first live. Uh, hey, Reed. Comment. Uh, RRTNZ actually was our first comment, but he did it before the show was actually on. So. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm just, I mean, that's, a, I guess I'm nitpicking just because I feel like, you know, it's not something that I think is very organic. I mean, and, mm-hmm. and again, it's, it's a fantasy f- action horror film, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It was like a little so, bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I feel, I but special. I just, I feel, I feel like uh, the fact that they kind of just, slid that in there i felt that was a little on the not it's not the woke side at least a little bit like you know because if you watch i don't think any of us watch regular tv anymore but i'll no, tell you this no. that that i only that's all there was in the in the joint and uh yeah. you know every yeah. commercial is a mixed race couple and i'm telling you it yes. is not yes. it's not it's not that it's not that common um there's yeah. that and then there i i i really this is a obscure but that zit that the main character guy that the father had on his nose was so distracting to me oh my god me like, too. i don't know I, if it's I, because I, I had high def in the theater <laughs> I, I was watching it on a shitty i death. was looking at that and i'm like <laughs> yeah like i was like that thing that thing needed its own sag card oh, because god. it was so huge i could not and they kept doing these close-ups of his face mm. and it's like it was right here and i'm like Dude, I didn't look uh, it up. What else was that guy in? Because he looked familiar, but I couldn't. He remember. was in. Yeah, I oh, actually have Violent Night pulled up on IMDb right now, okay. so I was gonna yeah, look okay. and and look at that. But yeah, that was really super distraction. Um, his name is Alex Hassel. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, he was a good, he's a very good actor. Um, I don't. I, I, oh, he was in. Um, he was in Cowboy Bebop. He was in The Boys as well. Who was he in The Boys? Sure. He must be one of those guys who like they they really mess around with his face and things yeah. like makeup and stuff. Oh, you know, he was, oh, he was freaking guys. He was translucent. He was oh, translucent. Yeah. That's why I didn't recognize yeah. him because he's only because yeah. he's only visible episode. like a few frames. Oh, he was translucent. Okay, yeah. I only Shut watched up. a little bit of the boys, so yeah. Um, partially because like what anything that's based show. on a comic, great I show. tend to it, it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's great, but anything that's based on a comic, if I haven't finished the, the, the story that it's about, it kind of, I try not to. I mean, yeah. granted, I don't want to watch anything MCU nowadays, but, yeah. um, but yeah, the, uh, I, I didn't have like any wokish problem. I, I will say this: it was kind of weird seeing like Beverly D'Angelo like, yeah, playing like such a, see you next Tuesday in this, yeah. uh, because she's usually such like she plays such a nice character usually like I, I remember her from like the vacation movies oh, yeah. that's like what i always remember her from uh, see but specifically that's, that's her the shower scene. in the vacation yeah <laughs> I, that's funny you say that because i had no problem with that because uh honestly <laughs> i wasn't a problem it was just a little it was like uh, putting for me a little bit yeah i always i always kind of saw her as a see you next tuesday in those movies i always thought she was really like hmm. she she was way too harsh on clark like you know what i mean i mean she, gave, she I gave mean, clark the at this point, any, I don't think anybody's too harsh on anything Ch- Chevy Chase oriented. So, <laughs> oh man, yeah, hey, our childhood heroes. Fletch man. is still one of my favorite movies. Yeah, Fletch yeah. is still one of my favorite movies. I hope I hope nobody in in the, our Facebook group expects that any any posts is going through while I'm uh, while I'm live streaming. <laughs> oh no, this no, is no, only no. thing. It's got to be at the top. The, we got to get yeah, at you least either watch our more viewers today. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I'm not. I'm not approving any. I should. Post that. Like, Honestly, I, I you should you guys... don't approve anything I say. Apparently, because I'm I might just get the group taken down by accident for answering a question. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, Good job. Yeah. Good yeah. job. I didn't know. What's a word I that doesn't mean the same thing it used to mean in the past? Nazi. Yeah. Oh well, now all yeah. of a sudden you're on a list. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> know crazy. I couldn't say Nazi on Facebook. Oh, yeah, so, it's like, my bad. It's like the old. It's like the old Chappelle joke from one of the. I didn't know I couldn't do that, officer. Uh, I didn't here. know I couldn't do that. <laughs> that was uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, we put Netflix on. We watched me and my entire family. Everyone, the whole twenty Caucasians, watching two hours of Dave Chappelle's show, and like it's oh my god, that show is so legendary. 
actually it's, one of the last oh clips I put into my um, my video my video essay was oh. from Chappelle's show. Yeah. Um, I just I had I couldn't think of something to put in, and I like I I had I had to use, like, the word I needed to sync up with was style. Yeah. Style. So I was like, oh. I, the prince sketch the prince basketball sketch that's that, that, that's gotta work it's just like a last minute thing I'm like, oh, here you go i watch it 50 times i swear to god <laughs> that show oh, yeah. uh man that show was was so uh, like so ahead of it yeah time. well you know he's but and, and yet would yeah, never happen yeah he right. he's come out he's come out to say uh you know he doesn't he please do not watch that show because he doesn't get any money from it you know, he's yeah. come out on stand up and said, please, if you if you really love me, don't don't watch the show, please. Well, That's... remember, if you watch Netflix, so Netflix is paying him as his residual. So he's saying before Netflix bought it, that so that's what we watch on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, at this point, I watch most things on if I can't I, I watch it on YouTube or Daily Motion at this point. So I guess like... that'll be another topic one day. We talk about that. It's like it's like Netflix is weird because they'll do some stupid shit like Sandman. But then they 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 back up. They, they, they back Dave Chappelle. You're Sandman like, is one of the speaking uh, of just just to touch on uh, this. Sandman is I won't watch it no matter how good or bad people say it is because yeah. it, it will never do justice to the book. It yeah. just will never do it. So let's well, see. But then we have like, so we that have, was a. Okay, sorry. What is Sandman? I don't I don't even know what. That so is. Uh, in the very brief for Sandman, it's uh, yeah please yeah because if I tried to explain it in full, you we'd be here for hours. Yeah. Um, I won't even go into the, the 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 general premise of it. I'll just tell you that it was a, a basically a, a full on comic about like the, each character is essentially like a uh, concept, so to say, mm -hmm. like death and Lucifer, I guess I guess the term would be concept, and it's like it's very existential kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but the book is really trippy. And really, mm. like, like the artwork is really like uh, it, it's good. Yeah, it's good, but it's mm. like very unique. And yes. there's no way in hell that they're gonna that they they capture it live. It's impossible. Nah. Uh, it's it's hard for me to explain Sandman to someone who had, who has, hasn't read it at all because it's yeah. like it's it's it it is its own thing. There's no way to explain it comparatively to anything else. Yeah. But. Uh, I, yeah, and I, that's one of those things. I don't care if there was like a race swap or anything, and I just don't think it's going to be as good as the book. That's yeah. basically what it is. Like it's, you know, just my point that it sucks because you'll take something like say The Witcher, how bad they fuck up The Witcher, but then Cobra Kai's fantastic. So yes. that's why I said Netflix. I can't hate Netflix yeah. because they fuck up some things, but some things they get right. So I, it's hard to hate them for that. It's yeah. Uh, I, I, I I posted you know. this as a as a question of the day uh, the other day in the group, and I said. Uh, uh, I was like, how can how can Amazon do shit like total yeah. shit like uh, Rings of Power, and then yeah. something great like, like Reacher? Reacher. <laughs> exactly. You know, like I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't. They're they're so all over the place. Like, and somebody pointed out, they're mm -hmm. like, well, you know, they have different, you know, writing groups, and they have different, you know. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and yeah, I get that, but ultimately, this is like, you know, it's the it's this it, you know it's it's that brand you know what i mean like yeah. so because when it's successful you know wh what is the streaming service that does um ted lasso is that like apple a apple Funny. is that apple i was just talking ted about lasso? that wes yeah i'll tell you a second but did we lose that west again west coming out well if you hear this west and russell i was talking about um i was playing call of duty with some friends <laughs> and <laughs> But yeah, you're, like you're, when they have oh, something. Oh, that... oh, he's back. Hold on. Sorry. We lost you there for a second, Wes. Yeah. Did you did you lose me? Seconds, for, uh, it was yeah. only for a few seconds. We only lost we lost you for a few okay. seconds. Okay. No. But yeah, uh, I was saying, like, uh, you know, when they have a flagship show, mm. like when when like back in the day, House of Cards was like the Netflix flagship show. Yeah. When they have that was that, the original one. That was that yeah. that was the you're first right. flagship they show. They, they, they promote show, the shit though. out of it and they and they make sure to oh. tell you it's their brand. It's this is Netflix. Um so the excuse of well, they have different people doing different stuff, but yeah, but I mean, if it's an Amazon original, it's supposed to be, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're supposed to take credit for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have to take credit for the good stuff and the bad stuff. Yeah. So like they're all over the map. They're mm -hmm. really all over the map. I think one of the things about, uh, oops, someone just said something. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll read that in a second. I think one of the things about Amazon is that I don't even, I'm not even so sure that they know what they have half the time because they're. Yeah. They're just buying up every them and and like Google and 
like there's there's like three companies that are just buying up everything they can. And yeah. I'm not even so sure that they're aware of what properties they even own. Um, no yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, and also there's just, there's only so many good writers and directors. Like we have, you know, a hundred thousand projects going on at any given time, whether it be movies, TV shows, cartoons, all that stuff. And how many of those people actually are good writers? Probably yeah. I would assume yeah. less than 10% nowadays. It used to be like, yeah. it used to be so much harder to get into the industry for that kind of stuff. So mm. yeah, that's why questions that I, I asked myself the other day, cause I was working on my, another manuscript was I was, I was looking at something and I was like, uh, listening to the drinker on my break. Mm. And I was like saying, and actually Steven looks like Steven answered our question for us a little bit. Yeah, down here. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Apparently, I, I, apparently I, Jennifer I, Salky has been pushing the message. Yeah. The, the and message. I, I started to think like, cause I, cause my stuff is very, We'll, we'll get into it later when we talk about our projects and stuff. Yes, yeah. My stuff's very rough. Like, it's rough. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the novel Dirty White Boys. Like, it's like, it has uh, some. Is that based on my it. life? Cause... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It, it Actually, is. I might be, I, I, I'm, I'm a little too clean for my own good sometimes. But, <laughs> but, um, but, but I was sitting there thinking, like, what would I do if I was writing this and this was for an actual cable show? Okay. And and the and the and the, the they came in and said, "Hey, Mr. Kelly, we love what you're doing. It's so great. And you know, would it be great if we could could you put a diverse character in here? Mm. Could you maybe could maybe Jimmy be gay? Like mm. I feel like him and his army buddy are kind of gay. I feel like that would be a really great thing to push. You know, to kind of bring it into." the the world that we live in now and, and you know it, it would really help represent would you mind changing that a little bit so maybe a lot of these projects actually started out with like good intentions and you know yeah. i mean when you have something and, I, and you look at something like reacher huh. you know that lee child the writer of the reacher novels you know that when he got when they bought the rights to his books you know that he put some clause in there that said you're you're not fucking with my work you're yeah. not, you know what I mean? Like I have creative control. You're not going to turn Reacher into a soy boy, uh, yeah. you know, limp wristed, you know, uh, yeah. we're, we're not doing that. You know what I mean? Um, that's why I used to get so annoyed when that show first came out and we'd have people popping off about, Oh God. You know, oh, it's, it's, Oh, this show's kind of <laughs> woke. And I'm like, it's not freaking woke. There's nothing in that show that was not in the book. Everything exactly. that's in that show was in the book. And they're like, well, what about the diverse female? She's in the book. She was in the book 25 years ago, yeah. you know, so. Uh, just anybody who's who's listening or after listening after at the recording, Wes will reference Reacher every 15 minutes for the rest of his life. I get paid. <laughs> so, I, get paid. Hey. I get paid residuals. I get paid to promote Reacher. He got, uh, honestly, I wouldn't have watched Reacher if Wes didn't tell me to. And I, after watching like mother. I have man. to. I have to watch it because I know it's, that the next season's coming out. Um, I I've been putting it off but now that the next season's coming out i'm going to no bullshit russ after i watch it it's like to my kid the first thing my, my kid said dad when does season two come out i'm like i have a great teenager i mean he's like dad i love this show and i'm like my, my i was like buddy westwood <laughs> west approves <Yeah. laughs> like <laughs> you get you get a teenager that asks you when the next season of reacher's coming out i get a teacher i, I get a teenager that wants to like um hey dad is you think the last of us is gonna have gay representation and i'm like Technically, we don't know if it did. Oh, boy. We don't know if, if Ellie, Ellie was gay. Ellie is gay, They never the specifically said Ellie's it. gay, by the way. Ellie's gay, by the way. <laughs> um, and Stephen ne Neeson, uh, I've only heard bad things about Rings of Power. I'm not a Tolkien <clears throat> guy, uh, so I didn't give a shit. It could have been the greatest show in the world, and I probably still wouldn't have watched it. Yeah. Because I don't – I'm not – a Tolkien guy. I'm just, just I, I do agree with Stephen. I've heard this Jennifer Salky is like the Kathleen Kennedy of Amazon properties. That's before production. So well, everything's yeah. good before production. It's all feel good at that point. It's all people <laughs> going, "Hey, we're going to make a great fucking show." Of course, it's, mm. it sounds good. You yeah. can't. It can't. It can't be bad until it's made. <laughs> but um, yeah. my last thoughts on uh, on uh, Deadly Night. Violent, uh, Violent Night. Violent Night. God, I, you know, I said it wrong when I bought the ticket last night, too. You're like, I'm here to see Deadly Night, and they were like... No, I said, I'm here to see Silent Night, Deadly Night, and the girl looked at me, and she goes, Sir, do you mean do you mean Violent Night? And I said, yeah. 
And she gave me this like, oh, senior moment. Like, oh, <laughs> did, you, did you bring your AARP card? Are you? I'm like, listen, you little Gen Z fuck. You know? Yes. Yes, I did bring my AARP card. And, my and, veteran, I, did, and, my and I do card. want my discount. I do want my discount. And I do have my veteran's ID. And I do want, yes. And you know what's funny at the theater? I don't know if they do this when you guys, I don't, I don't know if you guys even go. But, um, well, one of us does. Okay. Um, I didn't they, have time. They hand you a tall boy and they make you open it in front of them. Yeah. Like, really? Like, as if they don't trust you to drink. They're like, sir, could you open that? And I'm like, yeah, because if you walk in with an open one, you can't hand yeah. it off to somebody. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't I, know what I, the. Don't give me shit about not going to see the movie. I did all the fucking graphics and set this whole thing up. Okay? I didn't say anything. I, I'm not talking to you, Wes. I'm talking to that guy right there. The guy is. Dude, <laughs> a good part is I have I have a winter coat with five pockets, so it's like beer, 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 beer. So I walk in like this and like, how you doing? I was like, it's fantastic. It's December, so. so actually, know- it was funny. So, um, back during COVID, my theater was uh, doing uh, private screenings. You could pay like it was like if you pay like two hundred so. bucks, yeah, for um the theater, and you can bring as many people as you a want. A lot of theaters are doing that shit. And yeah. so uh, me, like, you know, I, I had rented one out and I told people, I was like, look, I don't, shit. I don't give a shit if you don't have to pay me for the ticket. This is like, yeah. this is a thing for just please buy concessions. Like that was all yeah. I said. Yeah. I was like, please buy the stuff from them. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, That's where you get you. Cause I actually do like my, th- my local theater and I, 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 yeah. I, I was, I'm glad it survived um, because I do, I still like going to a theater. There's nothing. Oh, definitely. Like no matter what you do, setting up giant speakers in your house or having the sixty-inch flat screen or whatever, it's never. It's not the same as being immersed around completely nah. by that the darkness and sound. It's never. It never be the same. If not- if the if working at a theater had actually paid decent money, I worked at a theater from ninety-eight to two thousand, right before I joined the army. And if that had paid decent money, I'd still be working. It's it's the yeah. best job in the world. It's it's so it's such a great environment. Yeah. Um, I, I love everything about a movie theater. I wish that, like, if I could have an apartment on top of a movie theater <laughs> or something like that, I would. I would do that. It, yeah. it, it's the best thing. But anyway, last thoughts on Violent Night. I would have really liked a little bit more of his Viking killer yeah. background explored. I, I, I would have liked that. I, I like and that scene. I, that we talk different languages. I, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I, I like that, and I, I like the fact they were really smart. This was really smart writing. Yeah. They made sure they he he says more than once. He's like, I don't know how the magic works. Yeah. Sometimes the, I, I don't know what makes the magic work. Um, so, like, they don't get over, over, you know, it's like, oh, he had to have the horn of Geld and, in order to <laughs> do this. And, but, like, you get the mechanics of the few magic tricks that he can pull off. You get, yep. like, he's, he's sort of immortal, but, I mean, if you blast him, you know, a bunch of times in the chest with some hollow points, he will go down, you know, things mm. like that. Um, and also I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not, I'm not made of stone. I'm not a total monster. The girl was, she was adorable. Oh yeah. She yeah, was freaking adorable. The whole Great Home actress. Alone knockoff scene. I fucking oh, my that. God. So, I was like, home, alone, home Alone earlier in the movie. Yeah. Right. Home Alone to the, to, and the fact that she, she uses the best <laughs> line from Home Alone. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? So like anybody even remotely familiar with Home Alone and it's been yeah. being kicked around <laughs> in memes and stuff for the last couple of years. The filthy animal that, line. Yeah. The, not only the filthy animal one, but um, the fact that <laughs> Kevin McAllister is like a, a serial killer and a hunter. And it's like so, he, he, yeah. he chose to go after those guys and kill them. So years you know? ago, I came up with this. So <laughs> I took in, in college, I took some creative writing courses and stuff. I, I'm not a particularly great writer, but um, I'm not even a particularly decent writer. But um, the uh, I I wrote some treatments for like movies I like to see and Wes definitely uh, just okay there he's back yeah it seems like every so often your your uh, internet's dipping a little bit. Wes you're like this yeah um, <laughs> it, yeah it seems like you're cut you're cutting out every so often so just be aware of that but um one treatment I wrote it was for this was like before they started pumping out okay. random uh, Home Alone sequels that sucked. Oh yeah, and uh, I wrote a treatment for a sequel that was basically Saw, like Kevin McAllister lost his mind, 
from being left behind all the time. I'd watch it. Right? And they actually bring like Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern out of prison because they're the only ones who can solve his like his, his like insane <laughs> traps. It was basically yeah, yeah. Saw, but with like Kevin McAllister. It was cool. I was like, man, I wish I had the money to make this work. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, but you ever see the honest trailers where they, they actually do the honest trailers body count? Where they show the actual yes. fucking that is fucking whole. I watch it once a year. It's it's so perfect. Like how many times they actually would have died in those films? <laughs> I mean, right. I recently watched the first. That's like my. Those are like my two. Like the okay, the Christmas season has started movies. Um, yeah. Because first of all, I, there's something about I love the second one, even though it's like the whole movie is just shark. That if if the first movie just jumped the shark. Yeah. Uh, but, um, like. Right in the beginning of that one, just getting nailed in the face with a brick seven times in a row. Is, is like, and all the visible damage is just like a little section of his head is red. Like, no, your entire skull yeah. would be caved in. Oh, yeah. It's. But yeah. Uh, what are you, um, so before we move on, what are your uh, final thoughts, Chris? On I, honestly, like you, you guys seen it yourself, and anybody watching Violent Night, there is, and this will be when it comes on video and stuff, there is so many fucking one liners. Yes. And they, they they all worked. I can't wait to see fucking memes about the one liners from Violent Night. There's so many of them, and it's gonna. I think over time it's gonna become like yeah, like it's gonna become a cult classic. It's you know it didn't blow up the box office. Yeah, I agree. Right? I do. Th- I this has cult classic written all over. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I I'll tell you one thing. I knew I was gonna enjoy the movie within the first like three minutes. Um, when he's in the bar and then he leaves and she's like, like he gets chased by the bartender and she's like that goes up to the roof is he gonna go kill himself and she follows him up and he's in his sleigh with the fucking he's reindeer like, and and you think he's gonna go and like say Merry Christmas he just fucking yaks right onto her and it's like and it's, all, like, it's steaming too yeah it's like and she, like I knew I was like okay this is gonna be great this whole movie is gonna be and like I said to you yeah. in the in the pre the, the the pre-show room that, that mm. I was I was kind of like I was into that blonde chick the, yeah. like one that got um uh what was it how'd she die she got she got like just oh she just got fucking smashed with a hammer yeah. but yeah she I was like into her for like, like the whole movie I was like yeah she yeah. yeah I think just overall she can Bond assassinate me Bond Night's one of the films where it's guys just sit back like die hard sit back grab a fucking beer grab some popcorn and just don't think. Just think and just yeah, enjoy. It's a show. popcorn movie. Exactly. It's a popcorn movie. And you know yeah. what I thought? I thought Russell, uh, same, same thing when that it's like that that scene announced itself to say, okay, this is not what you think. If you think you're exactly. watching something cute, this is not yeah. gonna be cute. This no. is gonna be one thing I was immediately surprised that he's actually Santa Claus. I didn't get that from the advertising at all. Like it turned out oh. that he actually well, I didn't I don't I avoid trailers like the plague. I hate okay. trailer culture. Um, so like I only yeah. saw like the brief snippets. So then when I mm. saw he actually was the real Santa with magic, I was like, Oh, that, I'm really yeah. into this now. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought it might be like a Santa, like uh like the Santa Claus movies where he had mm-hmm. been like it was a long row of Santas that had taken stuff over and he had been like some assassin or something like that, and then he accidentally but I guess they I, I like what they did better, I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I they they definitely uh did uh good origin story for him and uh mm. you know what I, you know what else i thought i thought it was like it was sort of similar to hancock except they had some balls it was like you know you have the hero that's a drunk fucking hot mess you know <laughs> asshole and he stays that way he doesn't change he doesn't no. he doesn't become because halfway through hancock hancock becomes will smith you know what i mean whereas in the beginning of the movie wow that's drunk, true i never thought about this that. drunk crazy asshole oh, just shit. causing yeah. damage and havoc and then, and then later on in the movie, he just turns into superhero Will Smith. Huh. Yeah, uh, he, he's it, just it, Superman it, from West Philadelphia. At that point. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> born and raised. <laughs> born and raised. That's a good analogy. Wow. But yeah, I mean, awesome. I I think that pretty much sums up everything. It's it's definitely a movie yeah. that I do think will gain traction and popularity in over yeah. the course of the years. Definitely. As opposed, as opposed to Avatar. Yes, hold on, hold on. Don't say, it. don't say it yet. Hold on, that's our second thing. These are all actual. So oh, I just, boy. I just found this random thing of beer taps and just like black, black them out. So I don't know what beers are behind these actually. Uh, I, I like it. I like it. I this honestly, like a good bar. maybe what? I should apply to this. Pl- I should apply to this place. Yeah, uh, this like place a has a lot of shit. Now that I look at the background of it, this has got a lot of shit going on in here. They, got, they have a lot going on in this. I don't place. know how that how how anybody would find anything. 
if, <laughs> like, if, if heaven existed, that's my screenshot. I don't. It's funny because like I don't drink much. Like I, I, and when I was on on the happy hour and like I know said, I was watching it. Like people were like, "Oh, he's not drinking." I was like, <laughs> "Fuck!" They called me out on it. I was like, "Okay." And then I, and that wasn't like I would. That was straight tequila. That's the weird thing about me. It's mm. The one thing I enjoy. I actually can't stand beer. Can't stand like most things. Yeah. And then, you like, pick the worst thing. I, I, I know toxic, it's weird. Worst, you pick. A, you're like, I don't drink very much, but when I do drink, I drink this toilet duck that will kill you. <laughs> hey, hey, tequila is the only liquor that does not spike your your blood sugar. So yeah, it's, it's actually... also the only liquor that I've ever drank that has made my my right eye close and stay shut for three so, days. So recently, after a case, I, I, I had tried. Ironically enough, I recently heard drinkers get somebody asked him about peanut butter whiskey or something like that. Ugh, I tried it, God. and I, oh, I was oh, look like, at this. That, that's the one I tried. <laughs> See, that's I the one bottle. I tried. And I, I, I took a swig. It's delicious. And I was like, I, no, I was like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I got to wash this out of my mouth. Give me the tequila. The cheap one. Give me the cheap one. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's part of, part of my video. You'll see. I actually made a video for okay, Dark I'm gonna, Harvest. I'm going to drop said, our thing, but Avatar, yeah. our Avatar predictions are next. I'm going to drop this out so we're bigger. We're I just said, I was like, drinker said, drinker sounds last in the live chat. He won't drink peanut butter whiskey, but I will. So <laughs> that's literally the one I tried. It was just it, the thing was it was too sweet. Like I, I wasn't expecting oh, yeah, it to be right. so sweet. It was it legitimately tasted like um peanut butter. like 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 a like a peanut butter like candy or something, just with like. A burn sensation to it. That was it. All right, here we go. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if you guys yeah. give me like like t like ten seconds, you guys just talk amongst yourselves. I'll, I'll go grab my tequila. Just give me a second. Weston was just. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I joke, but I'm yeah. like, listen, I've been to prison. I put worse things in my mouth, so you know we're good. Oh, <laughs> well, those. Well, to be fair, no. to be fair, those those honey buns are not cheap. You know, I'm telling so. you. Oh, I, well, eventually, as we gain fans and gains a following, West, like, uh, boy, th those prison honey buns. I got a friend of mine with some stories about, like, you know, nutrition, big guy. It's, uh, I, it, it, you've been there where it's, it's always good to have when you're a guy like me who's a small dude. Have, have, pick the biggest guy and uh, 2,000 inmates, pick the biggest guy as your best friend. So, you know, my, my best friend's a six foot five, 275 pound Indian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he he would pound honey buns like you wouldn't believe, and I'm like, the dude was like a fucking like a, a statue. I'm like, oh, that's there's stories behind. That's that. actually how I, I I I got outed. I got outed one day with a chick that I was getting pretty serious with after I got mm -hmm. out of the joint the second time, and uh, she she was like, uh, she she came out to the breakfast nook and asked me, "There you go, cheers." There you go. And uh, Man, she, she, she it's the saw cheap me tequila because the expensive stuff is just honestly not that much better. Yeah, this this this, this 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 is Thanksgiving holiday pay because this shit's expensive now. Like, fuck this bottle now is like fifty bucks for Jack. I'm like, god damn, guys! Like, like, like a good bottle of tequila barely barely tastes good, like better enough to justify like the the fifteen times price tag. So, See, yeah. that's that's because you guys are out there in the East Coast. You guys are out yeah. there in the East Coast where everything's expensive as fuck. You'd be out here in Kansas, yeah. and you know you could probably get the same bottle for twenty five dollars or something like that. Yeah, yeah, everything everything so. is is horribly overpriced in the I'm I'm from New Jersey and it's it, like I mean uh, I and I I'm pretty close to New York City. Yeah. Uh, I I'm like I literally work like like you could throw a rock and it land it'll land in New York City. That's how close mm -hmm. I am. And it's just obscenely so just driving that direction in the state yeah. is like yeah, at New York City, I've been a couple of times. It's it's like you know they, they think that New York City thinks that it, it fuels the entire state, and like the entire state's not like New York City. But no, it, it's, not it, even it, close. No, it's like it, it should be its own economy. Like, Honestly, if you just uh, drive, so um, I, I go a little past there frequently, um, like up toward uh, like the Catskills, mm, okay. and like just just like maybe ten miles past the city, like uh, city this way, Catskills this way, um completely different but it, it almost it feels like a completely different country yeah new york city that's how i feel it's a, like people people say because i'm from new york like oh you're from new york city I'm like no 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 like new york state is not new york city it's like yeah it's i'm like actually probably closer to yeah. to a, a quote-unquote new yorker like a like a like a um like a, like a person that like people associate with new york city i'm probably closer personality wise than you are because yeah. that's I'm, of my proximity yeah never Never. So, I'm I'm good out here in the Midwest. I'm totally yeah. fine out here. 
Anyway, so Avatar, yeah. though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hey, guess guess who? Guess I'm. I got the Avatar page up. And oh boy. Guess who's, guess who's in Avatar? Kate Winslet. She Kate is. Winslet. Yeah. Guess who else is in Avatar? Uh, she, she she broke an underwater record though. Give her credit. What you know? what records that? Yeah. She actually she held her breath longer than Tom Cruise did. She held her breath for like was it like West you know, seven eight minutes or some shit like. Also also mo- yeah also movies involving her and water. Uh, tend Never to have well more, yeah well they also tend to have more boobs yeah than anything Tom Cruise does with water so I'm yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell Look, you this, that was my. Um, I, I, that was my generation's first pair, okay? <laughs> so was like, it? Well, I'm I'm 34. When that movie came out, I think I was like 11. So. Mine was Terminator. Was uh, Linda Hamilton's in Terminator? Yes that 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 scene is so awkwardly placed in that movie. <laughs> like, yeah, what, the Terminator one. Yeah, yeah it's like so awkward. Because I was Great. watching that with my mom on HBO. One of the greatest movies watching, ever uh, made, in my opinion. Right. That scene just makes me go. Mm, this, she no. is 47 years old, right? And she held her breath for seven minutes and 12 seconds, beating the record from Tom Cruise, who held his breath for six that's minutes. That's like Navy SEAL level. And that's what yeah. she did. For, so it, for, that, that's for Avatar too. So, yeah. eh. huh? All right. So anyway, so who are you yeah. trying to get us to guess, by the way, Wes? Sigourney Weaver. How the fuck yes. is she, she died in the last yeah. movie? Or did she? She did. <laughs> Look, well, I was there. This, I watched it. Was, you were there. He was on Pandora. Okay? I was on he Pandora. Was, <laughs> he was actually he was part. He was. You see, when when the military police uh, are needed, they go everywhere. Yes, we'll go uh, uh, space wherever. wherever well, it's needed. if there's a hey. base, you need to have a, a military cop there. So. But then, Wes, hey, unless you, I, 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 I would have definitely been on the side of the the terraforming uh, mercenary guys. They <laughs> they in my mind they were in the right. You want the, to get the some nov- unobtainium? Yeah, Worst unobtainium. Name ever. <laughs> oh God! Worst t- right. name well, ever. I'm not sure how much you guys know, but also who came back for part two is Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang is back as well. Oh, Stephen Lang's back. Yes. Yeah. How? Apparently, no, but there's no consequences in. Yeah, in no consequences. So, he's yeah. He is, and I see that. Yeah, yeah, he's in that. Exactly. So yeah, we're, death we're means say. nothing. Death means nothing. Apparently. Uh, well, so I did read this. <laughs> apparently, Sigourney Weaver technically isn't playing the same character. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I don't. I, I'm curious to see that. I, I'll probably see the movie. I might not see it in theaters. I'm I already bought sure. tickets. Um, I liked the first one. Did I didn't you? love it. I didn't love it. Like it's not like I don't like. If, if if I'm listing my top ten movies, even of that like decade, I'm not putting it on it. But like yeah. I, I had, enjoyed I, it as a spectacle. I had little kids, so I took the kids to see it. But I was just yeah. like, I was just sitting there. Like, you know, I was just looking at my, I was like, are, are we done? Like, is, how much longer is this fucking thing going to be? Like, this is, <laughs> this is terrible. And then when it came on DVD, my ex had wanted to buy it for me for it. She's like, do you want me to get you that Avatar movie? Cause I used to have this huge DVD collection back in the yeah. day. She's like, you want to get Avatar for the, your, your, I'm like, fuck no, I don't want that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to watch that piece of shit. I mean, what I'm also, movie. I'm also of the belief that. You can enjoy bad things. I did a whole video, like uh, me and uh, yeah. Gwell on my channel, the channel <laughs> that we're, this is posted on. We did a whole thing on Black Adam, and that was like my whole point was that I, you can enjoy bad things uh, as long as you're willing I mean, to point out that they're not that good. I saw Black Adam twice. You can <laughs> enjoy bad things. <laughs> you can enjoy bad things, but like the fact that they have come up with. What is he talking about? Doing three more sequels to this or something? Actually, like that? actually four more sequels. Well, here's the thing: I mean, is James Cameron, he's a, he's a dreamer, okay, boy. and yeah. he probably thinks they're doing four more sequels. But I assure you that if this does not make one point five billion dollars worldwide, oh, they may get one more sequel, and they may yeah. be like, they may pull like a Game of Thrones and be like, okay, yeah. Get it all together now, and we'll get this fuck done. Well, I think that's a topic. Topic started is like okay. So as of right now, James Cameron he, he says that Avatar two must make at least at least two billion dollars just to break even. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> There's a possibility it makes that only because of the the fact that people want something that isn't superhero stuff. And it, well, I, we've all seen the drinker himself has said, he goes, well, one thing, though, Cameron, even the drinker is said on a, su- a Super Chat Ketchup that if anybody could do it, it would be James Cameron. And even the drinker is like, I, I, 
honestly hope the Avatar 2 does $2 billion because I have a lot of us are sick of the MCU and the Rings of Power and Doctor Who and etc. So, yeah, Avatar, it's like it's going to be a very long discussion about that. <laughs> it's, yeah. That's an interesting point for him to have because he has a video where he's talking about Avatar, the most profitable shit movie you've ever seen or something, something to that effect. Yeah. And he just bashes Avatar. So, you know, I, I actually wrote him on Patreon about that, and, and he did write me back. He goes, you know, I, I was like, you know what, Avatar, I we've hit this point where I've, I've said this endlessly, Top Gun Maverick. I truly think that Top Gun Maverick, if it was if it came out five years ago, it wouldn't have did a billion dollars. I'm sorry, it wouldn't have. I agree. I agree. Know? So I Avatar, agree. I recently, two months ago, it came out. James Cameron released this um, Avatar remastered. I took my sister, my son, 10 of us, went to, or five of us, went to go see this in, in 4D. Seeing Avatar in co- in comparison to like the past ten years, it's a bad film in the sense ten years ago, but compared to twenty twenty two standards, it's a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I would just like to point it out: it wasn't it wasn't Avatar remastered; it was Avatar. We need to take back the record. Uh, that was what that <laughs> was because that's the only reason why that got re released. I, I can't lie though, guys. I seen it. My sister and she was Chris. I because I was in prison like West when Avatar came out, and she was Chris. I seen this twice in the theaters, and she goes, "Holy fuck!" I've twelve years later, it's still the most beautiful movie ever made, and that's like seen I, it in I'm a the-, the only one who's never been to prison here. S- seeing it in a theater though is different than seeing it yet. Home. That's a problem. Yet. It's not, this is the worst day of my life. No, the yeah. worst day of your life yeah. so far. So <laughs> far. My thing is like, go watch Avatar Remastered and go watch G Hulk. You're like, this movie is fucking is Oscar worthy. <laughs> I don't understand the like no. the the whole She Hulk like oh, CGI. Christ. Like you have the you don't yeah. even need the money when you have the pre renderedness like basically done already for Hulk. The whole thing is I don't even want to get into that. Like yeah. that's. No. Like, but th- like that's my point, it? though. It's just we, we, we see we see the special effects of Avatar in, in like say Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, is a prime example. When you watch a like, Smeagol Gollum, this you look is at the, the only She Hulk. This is it. I, it's, it's definitely like we see some of it. It's kind of yeah, like blurred out. On. Yeah, it's yeah. Green screen. Yeah. It's the John Byrne run. Yeah, John Byrne. That's the legendary yeah. She Hulk run. Yeah. But Wes, this is why I like talking to you for because this is a prime example of two people. Like you can say you hate Avatar. I can say like I don't love it, but I respect it. But I've always said this with critics and stuff. You can have two people, and we talked about this, where we can have difference of opinions but still respect each other's viewpoint. So yeah. I, I, and I've always said I want to make a, a video myself the next week about the drinker and Avatar. It seems like Avatar, I mean, love it or hate it, we can't deny the fact that it did $2.7 billion fucking dollars. And it seems to but, be like either you love it or you hate it. But Yeah, you know. I mean... I don't care about 3D. When I was a kid, 3D mm. was a huge thing. You know, I went and saw uh, uh, Friday the 13th Part 3D, and like yeah. 3D was always the big thing. You know, we'd get the 3D glasses. Yeah. I saw Nightmare on Elm Street uh, Part 6 or whatever was in 3D. Uh, you know, 3D does not have the high appeal to me that it does to other people. I think there's something yeah. wrong with one of my eyes, and I can't really see it correctly mm. or whatever. And regardless of that, I mean, yeah, yeah. You have unobtainium. You have, you know, it's basically just uh, Fern no, Gully and fucking yeah, Pocahontas and yeah, under and, a different and name. And dances with wolves. I am, I am not it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and dances with wolves. <laughs> uh, yep. And it's and it's it, it was back in the 2010s when they were trying so hard to make that into star. What's his right. name? Oh, what's the Australian dude's name? That's the um the lead. Uh, what is, Sam what's Worthington. Oh yeah, yeah, Sam Worthington. Worthington. Sam yeah. Worthington. Do you remember 2008 to 2012? Like he was yeah. in. Every uh, he was in everything. He, yes. was in Salva- yeah. uh, he was in Terminator Salvation. Yeah. Uh, he, was he was the Timothy Ra- Shalmalai. He, he was the. In- he was the um, uh, Zendaya of of 2000. Fucking- like Russ would say, remember he was in Terminator, two Clash of Titans films. Yeah, which both then- were the very definition of mediocre. <laughs> Yes. They weren't bad. Them, yeah. They just didn't do anything that made you go, "Yeah, okay, that was a good movie." Like it he's was a, like he's just a bland. He's a bland actor. It's that's like what, every that's now what and then says, "Yeah, he's honestly he's, just, he's he's less jacked and not quite as funny." Um, oh, the, fuck, the name just escaped me. The um, dude from like Magic Mike and shit. Um, uh, Channing. 
Uh, yeah, Channing Tatum. He's like yeah. less. Oh, Channing Tatum. He's like less jacked and just not as funny, Channing Tatum. Like he's got that like kind See, of I white dude think... look. Like it's you know. Yeah. yeah, he's just that average vanilla white dude. Yeah, and and it's just yeah. like he. I, I I've seen at least because when I was in Iraq, I had a bunch of bootleg DVDs and a lot. He had a lot of his stuff. He was in Texas Killing Fields. He was yeah. in Man on the Ledge. Um, and I seen all these movies, and the only mm. movie I can say with any authority that. He sort of did a halfway decent performance. Uh, was that one he did with Schwarzenegger, where uh, it was him and the team of uh, special ops DEA SWAT SWAT people stole a bunch of money from the cartel. That was cartel sa- uh, up. that was sabotage, right? Yeah, sabotage. Yep. He's good in that. It's a small I, 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 I don't know any 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 of those movies. So. Yeah, which is weird because yeah. I'm a huge Schwarzenegger guy. That was all as, as as I've stated oh. in the past. Um, on, <laughs> yeah. on, on on the Critical Drinkers show, might I add, I will yeah. never stop dropping that. That is my <laughs> reacher. Okay, <laughs> it's like I I say it to people who have no fucking clue who the Critical Drinker is. Uh, they'll yeah. like they'll be like, oh, what do you do? I was I was on Happy Hour with Critical Drinker. They're like, I asked you what you wanted for lunch. I was yeah. on. Happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but I, yeah. yeah, I'm actually surprised I've, I've never heard of that. But then again, like, there was a lot of shit yeah. where there was a long period of time where Schwarzenegger, like, post governor, like, I haven't heard a lot of that. Well, that's what happened, Russ. Is remember, he took like a good 10 years off acting. His, his, his very first role comeback was he played a sheriff. I'm not sure if West remembers that. It was yeah, uh, the last stand. The stand. Thank yeah, you. I remember, yep. yeah, I remember yep. that, yeah. that was his very first role after, after a fucking and, decade off acting, you know. Yeah, I mean, and it's then not exactly sat, then like he, he was this great actor. Yep. It wasn't, he wasn't exactly yeah. like he was this actor who, like, was really known for his... One thing yeah. I, Arnold always did well, and I know we're supposed to be talking about Avatar, but I'm talking about mm. Arnold because I always talk about Arnold. Yeah. Um, one thing he's really... He's great at comedic timing. I will he say is. That. He's a really, um, really good comedy. His comedic comedy. timing is good. Even in his bad movies, he has these yeah. moments where it's... Um, but th- his range is, like... That and yeah. action. He has. He can't really go into any other realms, and no. which is, I guess, no. that's better than most. Mo- There's a lot of actors who are just one note, and he at yeah. least has two. So no, no I think Ar- yeah. I think Arnold's very funny. He just he, they, they they never utilized it because I mean they did. Well, it just true depends lies. on which movies, you know. Like, true Lies. What's it? But true, true Lies is fantastic. But, I know made him, but it's, 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 still, it's still an action film, though. It's like, it's like, like you never seen Arnold. Action in, comedy like, is is a, is a genre. Yeah, of itself, it's like so. I think he could be in like he could be in like an actual comedy film. He would have that the chops for that. But you know. twins, uh, twins and Junior. Speak. This, oh, uh, Junior. Uh, <laughs> junior. I, I, I didn't like Twins too much. Either. I would say that the closest thing to that perfect blend of action and comedy that he ever did was probably Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. Because there was just enough action to to kind of play off, but it was mostly a fish out of water comedy story. Yeah, um, you yeah. know. But but, but yeah. we got to go back to Avatar. Yeah. Um, so okay. Uh, do you? What do you guys think? Do you think that it's going to make the money? Let's say let's be realistic. I don't think the, the two reason... billion dollars is happening. Let's say let's let's say one point two billion. So like that's kind of like a modern day success. Mm. Yeah. Drinker himself said e- a billion, easily a billion. I guarantee a billion. Two billion, that's pushing it. Yeah, that's I think hard. it could do like 1.2, 1.3, especially because because China has the Chinese market I, loves that kind of shit. I that think colorful. Go on. Uh, I th- I think this is going to go down in history as like the biggest flop in history. Mm. I, th- I, I I I'm saying it now. I think this is just going to be. What Ian Reed's saying, a billion, maybe a little more. I, yeah. I agree. That's why I said like one point two. That that's I the just, range. That I think if it hits that, I I don't believe this two billion dollar number for for shit. I don't because no. I don't think a studio would ever green light a movie that had to make that much money. Like I don't. Mm. I, I like yeah. Like there's no way a studio would do that. They've learned their lesson from like movies like Waterworld and shit. Like when you See, get the but- production budget too high and you have this. Yeah threshold you have okay. to hit that that yeah. that's obscene like it's one thing to say like black adam didn't make a profit but it also was only drew in like 450 or 500 million dollars something like that yeah. it's a completely different thing to to green light a movie that like 1.2 is not going to be a profit mm. i think i think that they on the on the to benefit them i'll say this they are coming out in or around christmas time Yes, there's going to be kids. There's going to be kids on holiday. And no competition. That 
Yeah. And there's no real competition. And there's going to be people that just want to go on an outing with their kids after they've done Christmas shopping and seen the relatives and they just go, okay, we'll, we'll take the kids to go see avatar, you know, shiny lights, you know, pretty pictures and simple story. Yeah. And that'll keep them entertained. So I, I think for that, it'll, it'll do well. I mean, James Cameron's not stupid among other, I mean, he might be a little, nah. uh, you know, uh, a dreamer when it comes to what he wants to get done. But as a businessman, yeah. he's not he's not overly stupid. He knew there were such better movies that came out around Titanic, but because it came out in the holidays and that became a, a quote unquote holiday movie, um, you know, he was able to like like dude, Titanic smashed LA Confidential, which is like one of the greatest movies ever. Yo, made. that that's a good and, movie. Holy shit. And, and, t- and Titanic is is garbage compared to that. But it was spectacle and it came out in the holiday right. season and it just it just smashed yeah. everything else when so i was for that titanic oh boy everyone you couldn't get away from it you could not that, that You're, fucking right song was on 24 7 god help remember. me i worked at a movie theater during when it was still out i was in high school that celine dion song was on fucking it was you, oh, you could not avoid god. it was everywhere like everywhere shit. so i mean yeah i think for that i think for that it's going to do well but I'm I think pretty sure that's the gonna... only Celine Dion song, by the way. I've never heard a single song of hers other than that song. <laughs> I I worship her whole catalog. She is the queen of the North. She's she the is... queen of the. She's the queen of Canada. She's literally I, I... actually didn't she like marry like a duke or something like that? He, he, yeah, something he was, like, like that. Yeah. He so like she twice... actually is royalty. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like but he was he was like twice her age or some shit. So I mean yeah. that's what that, love, that that's that love what doesn't she... know it. Love doesn't know a number. <laughs> And, and I mean, that's, that, that's, number, Chris. that is the privilege of being royalty. <laughs> you can do whatever yeah. the fuck you want. So. Yeah. I do, man. I but, think like the drinker would say, I don't know if Avatar could do it, but I, it would, at this point, it wouldn't surprise me if it did do $2 billion only because we have on Facebook and group chats, my sister Jennifer. Jennifer has not been to a movie theater in a fucking decade. And she said, Chris, I want to go see Avatar too. And I have friends who say, Chris, I want to see this film at least three times. So it's like, I've never really yeah. been able to get into going to theaters more than once. Chick- I think I can count on one hand that the amount of times I've gone to a theater more than once. Well, like Wes has said, well, the past decade though, um, who who has utilized who has utilized 3D though? Nobody has, and Cameron will utilize 3D. Hold that thought, Wes. Yeah. But, uh, what were you saying, Wes? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, coincidentally, I, I have I went and saw Terminator Two, another James Cameron film. Mm-hmm. I saw that in the movie theater. 14 times during the summer of 91. Christ. Not going to lie, times. that movie, I probably would have went. And, but it's also <laughs> different now because back then, movies were in theaters longer, and it took a lot longer to get to... Um, Digital. Well, to, well, well, to, well, home, to video. home video. Yeah. I mean, you were talking VHS. like a movie. A movie would come yes. out in yeah. in May of what's of one year. You might not see it on, on uh, store shelves. Not that Christmas. The following Christmas. You're right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I, I remember I got Terminator Two as a birthday because my birthday is in the summer, yeah. and I saw it as I saw the movie in the theater <clears throat> as my birthday gift, and yeah. then spent my spent my own money to go see it the multiple times I saw it. Uh, so that I might be my all. That's 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 in my all time top three movies. Like oh, of really course, like, yeah, top ten uh, for sure. For sure. I mean, I was only three or four years old when it came out. When did it? What year did it come out? 91. 91. 91. 91. So I was three I, I was, years old. I was ten. Yeah. Um, I was 14. So yeah, I, was I couldn't 14. have, I, I obviously didn't see it in theaters. Though I did yeah. have Terminator 2 action figures, which is crazy when you think about some of the stuff that they used to <laughs> exactly. give. Like, I remember there was Yo. like aliens action figures and stuff. And like, it, and they weren't, it wasn't like with Star Wars stuff where it's like aimed at people in their like 20s, 30s, 40s who have to spoil. This was aimed, like these figures were aimed at kids and they were for things that they weren't allowed to watch. My all time favorite yeah. one is the fact that there was a cartoon for the Toxic Avenger. Mm. Like the New Jersey's greatest oh my superhero, God, I might add. Uh, <laughs> the most accurate superhero. That needs Jersey. to come back, man. If any, we need anybody to come back. Tromaville, man. Oh, yeah. But the, uh, but like they used to, the, back then, they used to fucking pimp out anything to like seven year olds. It didn't matter if it was a story <laughs> yeah. about, it, it's true. like they had, they yeah. had a cartoon for Rambo. It's true. A movie I, I about, watched a, about a PTSD riddled <laughs> fucking army ranger. <laughs> like, yeah 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 um but yeah it's um and then i remember i got my mom bought me the vhs for uh my birthday the following year when it came out on vhs so i remember that um so yeah it it took about a year for things to come out on 
on any yeah. kind of i guess now, i guess now we call it digital yeah, it's media different but. now because like two three months after it's at like it, it, it debuts in theaters you're getting it on you can get it in your house so i feel like let people are less likely to go see if movies that. more than once now um like I can count yeah. on one hand. I, I like the movies I saw twice. Um, I saw The Dark Knight twice because I had to go back and rewatch that because I missed so much the first time I watched the movie. I was like, I have to go back just to get the rest. I was so entrenched in like the whole like Heath Ledger death thing that I forgot to pay attention to the movie. <laughs> so I had to like go back and rewatch it for the actual story, which I don't suggest actually because The Dark Knight does not hold up as well. When you're paying super close attention to it, uh, like if, if you you have to like if you keep yourself at that like distance of like yeah it's pretty cool like it's awesome when you start like really going like okay well let's look at the details start to it starts to lose a little bit but that's just me. Just real quick for you guys on the side, I remember my dad did this, but I had to confirm this on my phone. My dad bought Terminator Two for our for VHS for Christmas. My my father paid a hundred dollars. For that fucking wow. for, for that film, and I'm that gonna, was wow. in, in like nineteen ninety two money. And I'm I'm, I'm, type, I'm typing right here. This comes from Tiger Droppings. It says, "Wait, Terminator Two Judgment Day cost a hundred bucks for VHS back in the nineties? Yes, it did. It's like wow. that's how that's how things were different back then. Where it's like, imagine paying a hundred bucks for a fucking VHS tape, like and but you, like Wes said, it came out in theaters and you waited like." what 12 fucking months to see it on home video yeah. and you wanted to see it so goddamn bad but yeah dad that was our christmas present was terminator 2 for a hundred yeah. and of course back in 1992 a hundred dollars for my father who's making 12 dollars an hour <laughs> that, yeah. that was that That's was, no I said, it, was not, it was 1992 money which is different than 2000, yeah. 2022 money which yeah, is different remember, than 2002 money that, yeah, yeah. So, Batman yeah. costs. I know Batman cost a hundred dollars because I remember I had to save up and pay for half of it. With yeah, my, allowance. my mom made me pay for half of that. With uh, that, and you know, it's funny because when you actually think about that, because you you see like the secondary market nowadays for like oh, for uh, specifically for Disney movies with like the old clamshell. Uh, yes, thing, I have, plastic, I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a secondary market for that where for like collectors where pe- like collectors are dropping like oh 200 300 bucks on an open copy and you're like oh I'm making a killing it's like actually you're probably losing money based on what you paid for it back in the day like you yeah it's it's fine now cuz you're not going to use it anymore but like you actually probably lost money before before we get to the next topic, I'm going to go make a beer run real quick to the fridge. Yeah, go ahead. Be, yeah, we'll just be, we'll finish up this avatar yeah. topic while well, you're. And, uh, when Wes hears it, but it says right here in 1984, it was the standard. The standard Russell was 80 fucking dollars for a Disney movie. 80 fucking dollars for a Disney movie in 1984. I need to thank my mother. Like I now that I'm looking at, I'm thinking about this. I'm gonna go and like tomorrow. I'm gonna thank my mother. No bullshit. Remember the fucking Robin Hood with the uh, the Fox version it says my, this, my, this, one of my all time favorite Disney yes, movies. That, thank you. In, in 1984, that cost 80 fucking dollars in 1984. That's like like a grand nowadays. <laughs> And then Pinocchio. Uh, it's Pin- probably not quite a grand, but it's probably about like uh, 240 uh, bucks. Uh, I mean, so what would you say it was? I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, figure it out. Sure, right no, here. if you want to check it, but it says... Hold on, inflation calculation. It, it was 80, 80 hours in 1984. Pinocchio came out in 1986, was 80 fucking dollars. And 19, yeah. oh, we'll, do, we'll do that, 1986. Uh, yep. And you said it's 80 bucks? Yes. This is this is the thing I like to do in my streams and stuff, is just come prepared with the details. Look at this guy, says right here. 200, says, $212. So yeah. I wasn't that far off. Yeah. I said about two forty. Yeah. So I wasn't but, that but far like, off. It's like nowadays. Imagine spending two hundred bucks for a fucking for a DVD. You would yeah. never do it. Yeah. Like no one. Top- no one. No one. And it's funny because like that was the whole thing. Like digital distribution was really supposed to make it yeah. really cheap to buy stuff. And yeah. West- actually. We we're just comparing like uh, conversion rates because we said like back in 1984, like uh fuck was it um like freaking whatever Disney movies Disney movies were at eighty fucking dollars in 1984 for Pinocchio or like films of that nature like Jesus dude, and nowadays it would be it would, imagine paying two hundred bucks for for a fucking Blu-ray right now in 2022. There's nothing. I mean, it's it, you know people uh, fuss a lot. I can remember getting home from Iraq the first time and and one of my uh, chicks I was seeing was. She had, uh, yeah, had a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she, I had a few. Uh, so she had Netflix and she showed me, she showed me Netflix. And I was like, so what is this? Just like, it's got a bunch of movies on it. And she goes, yeah, yeah. it's got a bunch of movies and TV shows and, 
and you can, you know, you can pick which one you want. And I was like, she's like, what do you like to watch? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of into this walking dead show right now. And she's like, Oh, they have that. They have like the first two seasons on there. And I'm like, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. You know? And I was like, man, this is amazing. Cause you know, back in the day before that was even a thing, you know, I would, I would tape shows and I'd be working so much. I didn't have a chance to watch them. So then I would, I would do what's now called binge watching. And, uh, you know, I'd catch up on Buffy and Angel and X-Files and, and, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it happened to be in Brimstone, you know, Mm. all this, all the stuff that I was into the late nineties, you know, that I I would watch and get like three or four episodes and just binge those that I didn't have a chance to watch before. So, but yeah, um, to pay for that kind of media, I, I reminded somebody, I think it was my son last Christmas, I bought him, um, the director's cut Blu-ray of, uh, uh, Suicide Squad, the uh, the um, the original, not okay. not the not the remake uh, that they not, not, not the, the James re- not the soft reboot the the original yeah. yeah, the, the shitty yeah. fucking. Um, I had uh, before you continue. I, I have a, a funny story about that one. So I went to that. That came out of my birthday, right? That mm-hmm. movie. So I used to uh, a, a buddy of mine. He asked me if I wanted to go to a midnight show. He had an extra ticket. Dude, fucking fell asleep in the middle, oh, like halfway through the movie. <laughs> and the next day, he posts on uh, it was his Facebook page. He's like, "Oh, I give it like a like a C plus, B minus." I was like, "Dude, you you only watched half the fucking movie. You can't get. You're not allowed to legally give it a fucking review." Listen, <laughs> any film that kills Pete Davidson is a, I I recommend it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that I cut you off about the uh, the Suicide Squad DVD. <laughs> No, uh, but yeah, I bought that for my son and it was Blu-ray and I think it cost like $30, maybe $26, yeah. $25, $26. Right. I bought on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was like $28.99, like, somewhere in that range. Yeah. No, Wes cut out. Yeah. I, I'm just really impressed that Wes uh, apparently invented Netflix and chill. That's all I want to... <laughs> I don't know if anybody got that from that whole th- exchange there. He was like, "Yeah, I was going, to, I was hooking up with this chick with this Netflix thing, and no one had ever heard of it yet." I was, uh, well, I'm and, not sure. and, and then they started making shirts. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, I'm not sure for you, Russ, or when it, Wes, when you hear this, but like you know, for me, for Voodoo, I've been buying. I haven't bought physical media in like the past six years now, only because like I have a small setup and stuff. But like, yeah. it's just for me, it's so much easier. Whenever like, West comes back in. We'll, at, we'll at one point, I had I had like a thousand DVDs, and so I, I started like donating stuff to Goodwill because I'm to the point where, you know, f- I get people like physical media versus digital media. But I'm like, well, the thing is, for, for me on a budget, which I'm, I know you are as well, because you mm-hmm. have uh, have a kid. It's yeah. if I see Top Gun Maverick on Voodoo for ten bucks versus Top Gun Maverick on Blu-ray for thirty-five dollars, which one do you think I'm picking? You know, it's like that's why I'm yeah. a big fan of digital media because I'm like, guys, it, video games. You know, I will spend twenty bucks on Assassin's Creed versus sixty-five dollars for Assassin's yeah. Creed disc. Keep that going because I'm just gonna message no. Wes and tell him to rejoin. So just give me a second here. Yeah. So I I tell people all the time, and what the drinker would say that what sucks though is with Voodoo and Amazon or Apple TV things of that like you could buy a season of say Scrubs. Then of course a couple of years goes by. Well, guess what? Well now we find an episode of Scrubs too offensive because JD was in blackface, and they can take like your footage and it can start banning episodes so now you're like okay listen i bought season two of scrubs well we found episode two and episode nine offensive now you can't watch it anymore and you're like well yeah they just remove it there's certain movies that like i have um ones that i have like a out my living room i have like a wall of um they're like they're wall mounts for dvds yeah and most of them most of the time nowadays what it is is i look up and i go oh i want to watch that i'll see if it's on digital um but at least I have the option if it's not. And it's also like, uh, you know, it's there for me. I just want to bring up this. I, oh, Wes is back. Okay. Sorry about that, Wes. What back, dude. There you go. I just want to bring this up. So uh, <laughs> blank McBlankson. Uh, what's what, what's what did I do you? wrong? I have, apparently I had a... Oh, did we lose Wes again? Of course. Hey, it's, it's, uh, ch- so I just checked the private chat there. So our chat for Steven's talking. Hey, Steven. Uh, but what did I, I? I had a live stream on, but I, I'm not sure what I did wrong. So Dark let Lush. me know. Assuming you're still in the chat, let me know. And I'll, Blank McBlank sounds cool. Okay, I'm going to remove Wes again. We, we might be going uh, uh, Batman and Robin on this one for a while. I like that. Yeah, he said they were making they were making towers of VHS tapes of Titanic. We lived in London, 1999. Yeah. Yeah, I meant to bring that up. I don't understand what that meant. 
I mean, <laughs> no, he was uh, like he was saying they were making so many fucking VHS tapes. Like, like he was saying, yeah, like, okay, okay, I get what Titanic you. was, yeah, like remember, remember VH, VHS and, and MTV and VH1 back in the day, yeah. like that fucking Celine, that Celine Dion song, it was you could not avoid it, it was like every fucking way. <laughs> well, also, the thing, if you if you remember, uh, the Titanic. Uh, video cassette came in a two pack. Yes, so it was, exactly. Because um, it was a four, well, three and a half hour movie. So three and a half uh, hour movie, yeah. Which yeah. Uh, really, honestly, they probably could have did two movies and it would have been fine. Yeah, that's a funny thing. Like, well, the drinker himself has said that he's like, you know what? He's like, his exact words were like Titanic. The first half, I could give a shit less about the the um, love dynamic, but he goes. But the second half, in terms of, of a fucking disaster film, it's it's unparalleled. Like like Cameron built an entire Titanic himself and just are, destroyed are we, the ship. Hold that thought. Are we good now, Wes? Have you I returned? think so. Just yeah, just this time of night in this neighborhood, uh, yeah. we, st- we trust start me. Getting... I, I my old neighborhood before I moved was like that too. Around yeah. around like eight nine o'clock at night when everyone started yeah. streaming shows, yeah, the internet dipped. You do you happen to have Comcast? No, it's a place. It's called Midco. It's a okay. It's a, a Midwest. Uh, I was going to say, if you have Comcast, I I feel sorry for you because that's the worst company yeah. in the world. I have like, I'm so lucky. I mean, they basically have a monopoly on it. So where where are we at? What are we talking about? Just uh, we just kind of like we we weren't really didn't get progressed too far. Uh, we just kind of were yeah. were addressing the few comments we had. Uh, yeah, um, I'm still trying to figure something? out what my dark li- uh, my my dark live stream moment was. I, I want to know because I don't. I either it was a good thing I did and I want to keep doing it, or it was a bad thing I did and I also probably want to keep doing it because it's funny. I don't know oh, this yeah. blank Mick Blankenson. <laughs> I don't know. Dark lives. That's a possibility that some <laughs> one of my friends um, <laughs> being a dickhead. Uh, I don't have many friends, and but when yeah. I do, they're assholes. Same. So, same. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we can move on to the next topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, yeah what are we? What are we? Response. What are we streaming? Gaming? Reading? What? Are yeah. We hold on. I will bring. I'll, I'll pop that up here. Yes. It's what. What we watching? Oh God. All right. So um, if you're just if you're just joining us, uh, uh, can you pull that right back? Can you pull that? Oh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't picture yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty quick. Yeah. If you're if you're just dreaming us, uh, yeah, stream, yeah. Uh, dreaming just joining us. us on the stream. Uh, basically, we're talking about. Uh, uh, this topic is, is what are we into right now? Are you what are we reading right now? What are we gaming right now? What are we uh, streaming on? Uh, whatever. I just like I liked the alliteration of www. So I just went with what we watch. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, since I control the graphics and the, everything, I'm I'm basically God here. So it's what we watch. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So I I don't know who wants to kick it off with that. Um. You know, let's let's start with you, Wes, because uh, this is um, kind of your this is kind of your topic that you came up with. So. Yeah, I am. Um, I just finished the English on Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, I am. I'm, I'm really blessed right now because I got a I got a roommate, and she has whatever streaming service I don't have, she has. So like, she has Disney Plus, she has Amazon. Um, we wind up getting rid of Hulu, um, but. Uh, sure. And uh, so she, she has those that I don't have. And then I have like Paramount Plus. And of course, we got all the free stuff. Underrated, my dad. Paramount Plus, super underrated. Super underrated. So much good stuff. But um, mm. I've watched everything that they have that's that's decent. So I'm, I'm watching, just finished watching The English. And I'm about to start The Peripheral. Um, I've heard about and, that. Yeah. And uh, I've heard good and bad things. But I can tell you right now, The English uh, was really good. Uh, really, really enjoyed that one. Um, that's mm-hmm. Emily Blunt. It's a period piece sure. set in the Old West, and uh, it's it's not what you think. It's it's very it jumps around in time a, a lot. You definitely can't get up and go to the can unless you know you're gonna pause it because uh, you I was will, gonna say, do you not have a remote? Like, <laughs> I do. Well, I usually I, I'm very you know I'm always of the opinion that I'm I'm so sophisticated and I'm so switched on that I can I can follow anything. So there's many times I'll be cooking or cleaning or answering my phone or doing something yeah. and I'll I'll leave something running and I'll come back and then you know I'm totally fine. But with that I was lost. Like I missed five minutes of it and I was like I don't even know what's happening right now. Like they were in a completely different time and i so i went back and and rewatched it so um that's that's what i just uh finished and then of course i'm re uh, getting in preparation for next month's uh reacher season two oh, yeah. i've been re-watching yes, which reacher. Are, uh, pretty much our next on tap I, i've already decided 
I'm not even going to try to fight you on it. We'll just do. <laughs> I'll pull this up, Smart and man. it'll be like Reacher, Reacher, Reacher. More Reacher stuff again. about Reacher. Yeah. More stuff about Reacher. Um, yeah. And then, and then top five Reacher moments, and then personal projects involving Reacher. Involving <laughs> so, Reacher. <laughs> how does it book versus book versus yeah. show? I won't even fight you on it. I'm just going to yeah. let you handle that. I, one. I do want to hear about that because Wes is what Wes has read the books. So I want to hear about book versus show. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm so, not much of a reader, so I, I'd have to like take your word on it. Uh, yeah, at least, not, at least not books without pictures. I got plenty yeah, of those. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, I um, uh, I back in 2004 when I was still you know a pretty good citizen and I was an MP and I was stationed uh, I think at Fort Bragg at the time. I came down to Florida, saw my mom, and you know my mom has always been you know my big advocate with books and reading and stuff. And she she said, hey, I got this book um about an mp aren't you an mp because <laughs> you know family members never know really what you're doing in the military they never understand like you know so uh, i said yeah i'm an mp and she goes well there's this book about an mp it's set in the 80s are you interested in that i'm like yeah sure i took a look and i would find out later that it was the best one she could have shown me it's the enemy which is like the 10th or 11th book in the series but it jumps back in time so it's so chronologically it's actually the first reacher story um so and it's set in 1989 uh with the fall of uh the berlin wall and stuff like that now obviously i'm sure lee child's gonna update i mean he's already done it like reacher's not a a um a veteran of the balkan uh wars and, and things like that and, and desert storm one now yeah. reacher's uh you know a veteran of afghanistan and, and iraq too okay. so which would make sense obviously because it's set in present day yeah um whereas the first book came out in 97 96 whatever okay uh so um but yeah that that was the first one it's when he still was an mp um i i have in the last few years i've kind of given up on the book series because it gets a little ridiculous because he's like now he's like 70 years old and still getting in these adventures and and i'm like dude nobody's hitchhiking across the country and getting in these like crazy adventures and shit. I would, I'd rather them focus more on like his MP days yeah. when he was still doing that stuff. Not, not to say that there's anything, you know, and as far as the show, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 100%. The only thing that they really went off the, off the rails with was they introduced uh Neagley early. Cause she's not actually introduced till book four, but I know why they did that. It's because all the Reacher books are standalone stories and uh, they, they don't, um, they don't have a lot of recurring characters. Uh. So, but if you have a, t and if you have a book series, that's fine. But if you have a TV series, you want, people are going to want to see people that, they, so you're never going to see that black detective. You're never going to see that girl again. Um, yeah. The sheriff's deputy. Um, so they put uh. Neagley in there so that you could have somebody in there that people would recognize. So yeah, exactly. they've done a, they've, they're, they're switched on, man. They're, they're like, nice. in fact, I'd, I'd go one better, say the show's actually a little bit better. That show is better than the, the book that it's based on. Sometimes that can happen, so. That's kind of like know. the Game of Thrones technique, by the way, is like combining or uh, creating characters that are com combinations of the different ones. Right. Amalgams. Um, yeah, am amalgams. That's a, that's a great term. Yeah. Uh, because it's a, it's just, it makes it easier. And it's yeah. Like sometimes. A lot of times you don't want to deviate from source material too much, but sometimes you just have to for flow. Yeah, because uh, flow yeah. to a story is is the most important thing. It, right. It, if it doesn't flow right, you lose people. Kind of like how our stream has slowly lost people over the last hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I mean, we peaked at seven people at one point. So uh, yeah, yeah that's, it's our first bad. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then the other thing I'm doing right now is, uh, and this is that this is not a. Um, it's on Paramount Plus. It's called uh, uh, the Tulsa King with us of us yes I, I want to see that and, so bad and it's uh it's really good and and Actually, they do it they they it's a week to week show like you, i'm gonna it, watch it they, tonight fuck it yeah they they don't um you can see the older episodes but you can't see the whole the whole series so it's like it, yeah. it comes out every sunday night um so i think they're on like episode four cool. um sure. yeah it's it's really good it's it's and i'm not a big sly fan i'm not a, i mean i do i do dig rocky i like the rambos but I've never yeah. been a big Sly fan. I've never thought he was a very good actor. He's he's very good in this. He's I actually fine. was recently having a conversation about this where I mentioned that um, a lot of people think that Sylvester Stallone is actually like a really stupid person because he has trouble speaking. 
Um, nah. Which anybody who knows the story about why he has trouble speaking, it's because he yeah. had um, facial paralysis. Yeah. Um, but he's actually super smart. Like he really is. Yeah. And yeah. like, I mean, you don't, you don't win an Oscar for best writing. Yeah, for being, I mean, right. maybe nowadays you would, but back in the seventies, you didn't win yeah. by being an idiot. Definitely not. Um, so, but yeah, he he's he's definitely reinvented himself recently. It's kind of like he, I would argue that of the like old action stars to kind of go that grizzled action star route. Yeah, I don't think anybody's done it better than him recently. So true. No. He's seventy six years old and yeah. he's still killing it. He, he's doing some better shape than I'm at. It's I'm half his age. <laughs> you, you have to get. <laughs> With that show, my last thought on that before we kick it off to uh, Chris or Russell. Um, oh, I'll let Chris go next. Um, you, you have to get past that first episode. Because hmm. the first episode, I, I heard a comment somewhere, uh, I think on our page, where somebody said it's it, it's like watching Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Because um, <laughs> he just goes from play, he just, they just set him loose in Tulsa and he just starts taking over stuff like, like they're like, you know, like progression missions or something like that. So um, it is like that, and but by the end of the second episode, if you can hang in there, it's 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 definitely worth your time, and it's he, he's incredible, he's incredible. Cool, it does look good. Yeah. And that's what right, I'm into Chris, these days. Chris, you're up next. Um, I, two, I just kind of yeah. go in whatever order I feel like. <laughs> at the time. Two things. I'm not sure if you, if you West watch this one on Netflix. There's a show called Lock and Key. I do like Lock and Key. I think it's an interesting premise. It's got sometimes some cringiness, but not the perfect show. But it's like based anything. on the graphic, not like the uh, the comic, right? Yeah, I, I guess yeah. It, like Wes said, it feels like everything I watch nowadays is based on something. So, but I like the premise of like they have this family, have these these special magical keys, and it's only attuned to this family. And you know, it's not perfect show by any means, but I do like the overall arcing. Like I want to see where it goes. But I was laughing because Wes said this about canceling Hulu. I kept Hulu because Hulu has anime, and I'm I'm my, my son, my friend, my friend Big Al got me to the show called Bleach. And my sister oh, Bleach, Dragon said, Ball Z with swords. Yeah. yeah. So my sister was like, Chris, I can't watch Bleach because it's got 370 episodes. But when you have a teenager, I'm like, Jamie, watch one or two, one or two, one or two. You can burn up the episodes. But there's this new arc called it just came out called the Thousand Year Blood War. And the drinker, you guys have seen this on a super chat. How many fucking animes is everybody recommending to the drinker? And overall, anime is just destroying the fucking Western market because unlike it really is. Marvel and DC, anime doesn't have this woke bullshit. And Bleach, it's some, of them, that, some of them do. That's that's, that's some of them, yeah. But, but the thing is, but like, but like, nobody ever watched Dragon Ball Z and cared about you know representation or like trans issues or things of that nature. And they shit. don't even represent the Japanese market. Yeah. In- Dragon Ball Z. They're all illustrated look like yeah. people. Yeah. Except for exactly. maybe Kurt, who's supposed to yeah. look like a Shaolin monk. <laughs> yeah. Other than that. That's all good with fucking bleach. There's bleach. more there's more green people than there are any than <laughs> yeah. any minority on the uh, yeah. on the planet. That's a whole other topic about Dragon Ball Z representation, but like, you no, know, I, I had my ex girlfriend. We watched um, Full Metal Alchemist, and Alchemist is just, I think, in my lifetime, the original I think, or Brotherhood? Brotherhood. Brotherhood, Brotherhood is. One, yeah. I, I watched him with my ex girlfriend. She was Chris. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. She just adored that show, and of course, Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is a fucking masterpiece. They, like, yeah, the longer uh, they wait to release the second season or third uh, season, whichever one it is, uh, Attack on Titan, I don't yeah. even know anymore, but that that it makes, it's building <laughs> such anticipation. Yeah. So right now we're on episode seven of, um, it's called Bleach, the Thousand Year Blood War, and the first six episodes, I watched them with my son and it's just, it, it's fucking, it's perfect. It truly is the animation, the action, so yeah, it's between Lock and Key and Bleach on a Hulu, you know, and of course I'll, I'll still watch Family Guy here and there. I, I don't care. I still think Family Guy is funny as fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. watch, when you watch anime, are you a subs or dubs guy? I got to I'm not going to lie. I, I get addicted to the dub because like, you know, it's a like Goku. I know Goku's voice at this point. I know Ichigo's voice. I know like Full Malcolm's the guy who played um Edward and um yeah. uh fucking Vic Minanya Man- 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 there. I I just I get it I get attached to people's voices. So when I listen to like the fucking I'll, I'll watch the episode in subtitles, I can't get attached like like Goku. Goku's by a woman. A woman Yeah, voice Goku's is Goku. voice is very grating in, in I, Dragon Ball Z. It's I, hard, it's hard yeah. to watch. So it's like dra- any Dragon Ball for that matter. It's been the same woman since forever. It's literally yeah. the same person playing it. 
because because we, like, we all seen this all three of us right recently we had we lost the legend of kevin conroy and like you can't tell me like you you don't get addicted to kevin conroy's voice as batman yeah. i'm gonna say i'm gonna say with anime like anime what's like the ichigo i've i've known ichigo for 400 fucking episodes as one actor playing ichigo i can't not imagine ichigo not having that voice actor it's you know it's like mark so, mark yeah. mark hamill and the joker i can't i can't not think of the joker as mark hamill it's that, that's my problem. reason Oh, that's ahead. my problem with sorry that's my problem with a lot of um the newer like marvel and dc anime movies yeah. they replace they replace the the actors for batman superman things like that i mean if they're not the ones that did it for justice league and justice league unlimited yeah. i can't it, it takes me out of the store i can't i can't pay attention to it yeah, yeah uh, unfortunately, <laughs> you just reminded me. So for years, I didn't go to Comic Cons and stuff. Not for any per any reason other than I was too busy training and doing tournaments and stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jiu Jitsu tournaments for those who have no idea. Um, the so I and like you know conventions were just a thing that would get in the way of that. I would train on weekends. Why would I go do that? It's I was spending out. I've recently kind of gone back and like tried to re uh, capture. It was really that. Um, COVID that got me back into comics. Uh, I'll explain more in a second with uh, my stuff. But um, when you said, just said Kevin Conroy, he was at all these comic cons for like the last decade and I didn't go to any of them and I didn't meet him. And oh, now I super, I super regret it now. Yeah. 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 I've never met any of the comic cons I've gone to. I've never met anybody famous. In fact, I've never, we had this discussion was one of the questions of the day in the group one time uh, where I asked, I was like, has, has anybody ever met anybody famous? Like I've met, military right. famous people but i've not met like celeb like famous people i met mark you know hamill I mean? really did you really yeah i met mark yeah. hamill yeah i mean i paid to meet him it was a it was a convention but yeah. he was super awesome i met i used to be uh pretty active in the convention scene uh years ago so i met mark hamill the coolest person i've ever met uh well there's two of them jason david frank another one that passed away recently oh, super man. awesome guy yeah and uh sean patrick that flannery another fucking awesome yeah. dude yeah, Sean Patrick Flannery's uh he's awesome. What who's Jason? Is that the Green Ranger? Green Ranger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he just passed away. Like you're saying, Russell, I I said take away Mark Hamill's Twitter. I've never I'm fucking 41 years old. I've never heard a single bad thing in terms of Mark Hamill and fan interaction. People I don't just, think I, it's weird because I feel like his Twitter, I don't I don't feel like he runs it. I, like, I, I feel like that's a very it. yeah, that's yeah. a very common thing. They have people that run like yeah, yeah and, like because they could pay somebody like like either they can spend the time running that Twitter account or that all those so social medias, or they could pay somebody eighty grand to do it for them daily, and they can right. make more than that traveling around doing the convention. Exactly. Scene. Yeah. It's it's yeah. funny too because the times when when they really step on their dick and they say something stupid on Twitter that they shouldn't say, Ugh. that's themselves. And then when you know you have other people who are actually kind of awesome people like Mark Hamill. He probably does have somebody like like Chris said. He probably has somebody that he pays to do Twitter. That was actually a plot point. Uh, at least a small one on uh, the boys in yeah. uh, I think season two where yes. uh, that's how Becca met Homelander because she she ran his Twitter account yeah. and you know Butcher was all like oh you don't you don't do it yourself and he's like ah oh, too busy wasn't saving a bad the world. British accent oh, I was expecting yeah. way worse than that not gonna lie <laughs> yeah. yeah spent spent a bit of time across the pond I have mm. you know yeah but it's on. It, it, it's poshy, but uh, I'll accept it. Well, you guys oh. see, see this with YouTube now. How many YouTube guys? Like, I know Russell, you, you obviously yourself, and Wes, Russell Wes is running his own stuff, me editing it. How many people hit, like, I have 5 million subscribers. People stop editing their own stuff. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually said, I, you and me were talking about this recently. Yeah. Like, it's impossible to keep up with, the, with, with someone who's a professional YouTuber because yeah. odds are, first of all, they have more time than you because that's yeah. their job. So that's yeah. what they're yep. doing. Number two, if they make it big, and like even probably, I, I don't know if Drinker does this, uh, or I know I know Mahler calls in a lot of favors yeah. um, to get his stuff done, but his videos are also five hours long, yeah. uh, you yeah. know. But there's definitely like a at least the baseline of it, like the base video for them to put their own shit on top of, is done by somebody else more, more often than not. Yeah. The bigger names. Yeah. So, that, so that's why you can't try to compete. You'll never keep up with them. You will, you will, you will lose all your hair, like just tearing it out from like frustration trying to keep up with them. So that's yeah. Um, I guess what I'm watching. Oh, uh, uh, one thing I want to say: if you've never heard of it, uh, Chris, since you're into anime, have yeah. you ever heard of Hajime no Ippo? No, I haven't. 
Okay. So it's a boxing anime. It's my all time favorite. Uh, I yeah. I don't suggest watching the dub. I suggest watching the sub. Yeah, because it's fucking hilarious. Some it, some it, dubs are terrible. I won't lie. It's not even the voices. It's just that the regionalization things uh, yeah. just take away some of the comedy. Um, I'll I, I, when we're off of this, I'll I'll link you to it so that way you can see what it's. Okay. Um, if you it's 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 like a love child between like. Dragon Ball Z or Yu Hakusho, Bleach, and like boxing. It's fantastic. Sure. Um, cool. well, so I'm not really watching anything right now. Um, I I often spend most of my time reading comics and um yeah. and I don't not none of the new garbage. Like please. I, I do like Starship Hulk, I'm not gonna lie. So some of the stuff is, is good. So that's what I was actually about to say. I'm gonna take these off for a second. <laughs> my it's starting to like pool right here. Um the, so there's this one. My one of my favorite writers is uh, Ed Brubaker. I'm sure you've mm. heard of him, Chris. Yeah. He was. He yeah. He did um, pretty much the one of the best Daredevil runs and one of the best uh, Captain. America. He did the Captain America run that made Bucky Captain America. Oh shit. Um, nice. So he does a lot of indie uh, stuff that's um, uh, creator owned, and I've been reading this one re- uh, called Reckless, uh, which is kind of about like. The best way I could I could sum it up is that this dude is basically like a fixer, like he fixes your problems for you. Okay. Um, and he's really good with like the the noir pulp kind of stuff. And honestly, I think Edward Baker is a genius. I've only read one series from him where I, I was ever like, I don't suggest this to people. Um, but like everything else I've ever read from him, like I uh one one that I read called Criminal was probably the best comic series I ever read in my life. And it's very, like, it's adult-oriented. Like, it's definitely for, like, an older generation, but it's so well-written. The artwork is really good. I mean, he doesn't do the art. That's Sean Phillips does it. But that's what I've been, re- I've been reading lately. I'm only one book in on five of the books for Reckless, but uh, they've been coming out over the course of, like, the last, like, two or three years. So um, when I get a little further, maybe I'll pitch it more down the line. And But so far in the first book, I'm really liking it. Cool. I don't. I'm, I'm not laughing at you, Russ. I am listening to you, but I just I clicked over to our page real quick, mm-hmm. and uh, fucking they are ripping Jennifer Lawrence, a new asshole. <laughs> <laughs> they were on on Drinker's stream before. I know. This. I know. Man, yeah. and, That's like, all. Like, I just, if you looked at the chat, it was like people would be like, "Hey, how you doing?" And it'd be like, "Fuck Jennifer Lawrence." For like, <laughs> man, it's she. Like, did, did these people not have publicity like agents it's, that like, it, I think they're sit them down and go, hey, don't fire don't do that. Oh God. If you click if you click over to our page real quick and you go to because you guys are both admins or your oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I'll take a look. I'll take a look. I'm later. scared to look right now. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, they, we have yeah. we got at least nine posts. It's just different versions of Jennifer Lopez or Jennifer Lawrence. Lopez. Jennifer Lawrence yeah. uh is Jennifer Lawrence was the first woman to walk on the moon. My favorite one that I read was uh, Sigourney Weaver thanks Jennifer Lawrence for paving the way one. for her or something like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's, like, it's like God, dude, you look, like you're not you're not even that good of an actress. I'm sorry, you're like it's seriously. I mean, her, her, her she, claim to fame is that she had a billboard. Ri- well, well uh, that and she had a billboard ripped down in New York City. Yeah. And of course, guess, and, and, and she of course she had the leaked nudes, right? And that's you know, which I yeah, which anybody, I, anybody so hot, who has leaked, which were so like, hot. I mean, they were I, so hot. They were so course, good. I would never watch leaked nudes of Jennifer Lawrence. No, of course not. No, no. But if you did, <laughs> but if you did look at them, they're really hot. If I they're did, really. Though, hot. Yes, I. You know, I had never seen them, but who's, apparently who's, a friend told me. Who's ever who's ever heard of that celeb jihad website? Huh? Mm, no, I never, like... no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. <laughs> I'm okay, saying. on that note, what are we? What are our top fives? And I mean, top. <laughs> That's our I, next. This hey, is actually... if you're just if you're just joining us right now, oh, uh, oh or one if of you're you. keeping up, yeah, if you're keeping up with us uh, as we repost this, uh, we're heading to our top fives. And what we've done is uh, for this first stream, uh, the big topic that we're going to talk about is our top five hand to hand combat fights. Yep. And, yeah, this was actually uh, suggested to us by R R R or R T N Z, who's a uh, awesome yeah. dude. Uh, he's he's group he's expert. Big, group yeah. expert. He's helped. He's actually uh, watched every video that I've posted, and he's given me feedback on all of them. Yeah. And I've actually, I'm I'm very thankful that he does that. 
And uh, so we decided that this is going to be a mainstay for him. He he sent me over like forty five different lists that he wanted us to do anyway. So I'm, we're good top, for a year. We're top five. <laughs> we're, we're good. Actually, we're probably good for the rest of the history of this show <laughs> if we do them once a month. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so let's start with Chris this time. Let me uh, pull oh, up. God. Hold Boy. on. Let me. Uh, that. So it's more, uh, it's more the, uh, yeah, Connie. The, 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 the bullshit version here. Now, to be fair, before Russ says that, Wes, I was talking about that. We talk about hand-to-hand combat scenes. One thing I will admit, we shouldn't make it like unfair in terms of like, listen, go watch IP, man. Go watch Jackie Chan. That wouldn't be fair because it's like, Jesus Christ, Tony Ja, these guys are professional martial artists. Like, Jason Statham has won actual MMA of like awards and shit, so, you know. All right, so I'm going to let Chris, I'm going to let you go through it. Uh, our rule is that we're only going to talk about one of them. Your your choice on your list, who, you, which oh, one you want to talk about. Fuck. Oh, that, that man. Means if you oh. want to go to the number or the oh. number one, that's that's up to you. Oh. Oh. If, we, hey, if, if, if I let us do all five, we'd yeah, be no. here till Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Good point. So, <laughs> so you can all go right. through your, your five. Talk, just do like a brief little thing yeah. about why you like each one and then. Uh, whichever one at the end you want to talk about, we'll talk about. Well, that's just powerful. Sorry, <laughs> if I'm gonna pick one, it's gotta be definitely um, Evil Dead Two. I gotta go with that. Ash versus his hand. And I'm okay, sure well, you, you can you can go through each one yourself with like a little <laughs> explanation why you like it first. Okay. And then we'll talk about that one at the end. Well, off the bat, kitchen fight for upgrade. Upgrade, like everybody said, Drinker actually did an upgrade in, uh, uh, review, which is awesome. Upgrade was a little movie came out of nowhere. It does feel like a discount, Tom Hardy. But when you watch this fight, when this character has Seth, the AI, take over, it's so badass because he gives the feeling of a guy who's not in control of his own body. And the, mm-hmm. the fucking cinematography is fantastic. Where oh, yeah. he's kicking the shit out of this guy and he acts like he's not doing it. The acting is top notch. But my favorite by far is definitely Evil Dead 2 because Bruce Campbell is weird because you put that second on your list. I know, <laughs> but just because, well, because Bruce Campbell, it's half comedy, half it's legendary acting because Bruce Campbell, he has, he's such a good actor. He seems like his hand is possessed and his hand is kicking the shit out of him. Like his own hand is whooping his ass and he seems like he's playing. This is before CGI and he was actually Jackson. punching himself in the face for real. Bro. Like it, it, he actually it, has done interviews about like how yes, he's actually wow. hit himself. Yeah. And, and it won't <laughs> he's passed the fuck out and his hand is crawling away but at the end of the day he cuts off his own fucking hand it's just like i think it's by far so fantastic yeah okay i said neo versus morpheus in the main west just vomited after you heard that he cut off his own hand <laughs> <laughs> i just heard like west just went and you just heard oh <laughs> um Definitely Neo versus Morpheus because I picked this one number three since I look this way. Keanu Reeves at that point was like he was Bill and Ted. He was fucking speed, right? Mm-hmm. Lawrence Fishburne was Lawrence Fishburne. These two actors trained for a goddamn year and they trained their fucking asses off. There was no stuntmen, no CGI. It was just pure fucking Keanu and Lawrence Fishburne going back and forth. But the first time he's like, I know Kung Fu. And Lawrence Fishburne's like, show me. And you see these guys. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to know, you know jiu-jitsu. I'm gonna know jujitsu. Yes, and just but you, at this point, you've seen two actors who never had a history of being martial artists for the first time fighting, and you're like, "Oh fuck, man! Like this is what the Matrix is actually fucking like." So I respected this, this fucking cinematography. Um, number four with Rig, uh, Riggs versus Joshua. I feel like you know it's when you when you watch this fight. Uh, fucking Riggs. Riggs is getting his ass kicked. Like, this shows Gary Busey as being a fucking badass. At one point, Danny Glover's character, Murtaugh, was like, Riggs, I'll help you out. And he goes, no, no. Danny Glover's got all the cops coming in. He's like telling everybody, no, no, no. This is these two going at it one-on-one. At this point, you understand that Riggs is a fucking badass. He's a military vet. He's got problems. And it just shows how much of a good villain Gary Busey is. And the whole scene is just so well choreographed. And it takes place at night in the fucking rain. And Riggs wins, but barely. Like, like fuck, like Gary Busey is fucking really putting it in on his ass. Like, they, it's like one of those, he has to earn the fight. So, uh, Fastbender versus Gina, Gina Carano. This is in the movie Haywire. Haywire's got a ton of fucking action sequences. And everyone knows it's Gina Carano. She's a legit fucking, she, at one point, she was the top MMA fighter in the world. You know, and we talked about this before. Drinker said Fastbender is not like, you know, he's not the rock. He's not Schwarzenegger. Fastbender is a pretty big guy, but he's not like some fucking 300 pound big muscle man. You know, Gina Carano is fighting fucking Fastbender and she's getting her ass kicked like he is fucking her up in this damn scene. She beats him, but she very 
barely fucking beats him. But all the fucking tactics were just like she's very artistic and smart of how she wins this fight. She does win it, but she takes a shitload of fucking damage. And as as I felt like out of all five of these fight scenes, the Fastbender versus Gina Carano scene is the most realistic fight out of all five of these. It, it's just so well choreographed, you know. That was so. actually pretty concise. I mean, you nailed everything right Sorry. there. Like, I didn't... And, and, no, and, no, I mean, we don't even really, we barely and, even talk about Ash and, versus his and, hand. You and, did such a good job. I'm, I'm, I'm already fucking kind of drunk, so. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. But yeah, I mean, uh, just since you yeah. chose Ash versus his hand, I, I haven't seen Evil Dead 2 in probably 10 years. Um, <laughs> it's stupid. But I remember fun. that scene very yeah. vividly. And him just like <laughs> sitting there and just like, like half out, <laughs> punching himself in the face. Just exactly. like, and he I was mean, really it, doing I mean, it. That was the one thing that they did right with um, Multiverse of Madness was him redoing that, even though the context <laughs> made no fucking sense. It's true. Like, yeah. see, Bruce Campbell, Bruce Campbell is the master of physical comedy. He just, it just, God damn, he's the, the king of B movies, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, he definitely, I mean, he's, uh, it's funny, because whenever I think of Bruce Campbell now, I, have, I, have either of you ever played um, uh, Poker Night, the game Poker Night? No, so it's, not. Poker Night is a, um, it's literally you playing poker against the first one, I don't remember, but the second one, it was, it was Ash from the Evil Dead. It oh, was, shit. Um, uh, Brock Sampson from. Uh, I see pictures of that. Okay. Adventure I've heard of Bros. That. Oh, um, shit, Sam from, from Sam and Max. Yep. And um, Claptrap from uh, Borderlands. Borderlands. Yes. And you're playing poker against them. Shit. And uh, yeah. as it goes along, like it's like the interactions are really the game. You uh, you want to get further into the game to hear the crazy interactions. And no. uh, uh, he actually, uh, what is it? Bruce Campbell actually plays Ash. He like came back oh, to play shit. Ash. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. So whenever anytime I see I, him. Anytime I think of Bruce Campbell, I either think of. Uh, him as the ex Navy SEAL on uh, 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 Burn Notice, you would. or I, dude, or I, I, oh my god, Burn Notice, oh Spider Man. He's he's the uh, like yes narrator oh, yeah. on on uh, Spider Man the, yes. the video game. Yes, yeah, he's eating, I mean, eating him sandwich still. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. I, I love that he played three different characters in the Spider Man. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. He played the first one was. Um, <laughs> no, Bruce Campbell said in an interview. He's like, first one, I named Spider Man. I named him. Is like, the, he's like, because he goes, I want to be the amazing Spider. He goes, no, no, that, that, that's that was Spider-Man. it. Yeah. He played the announcer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the second one, he's like, I freaking, he had the, um, he fucking, he turned Toby down. He goes, I defeated Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and he, he wouldn't let him. He wouldn't let him into the, the show. Exactly. Oh, it was the ring. He was the he was, was the major the, the day or whatever. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yo, but that's good choices fantastic. here, Chris. You're, I like what you like con- what you. Uh, put here. Here. You remember the concept art? With, uh, it came out from Emergency Awesome. He said the concept art for Spider Man Four. They wanted Bruce Campbell to be Mysterio. Yes, I've heard about that. Yes, that's, that would have um, been dope. Fuck, that would have been dope. That so would have been I, so uh, god. Oh my god. Just to circle back to your list here, dude. I would like to say that of the three of us, you have the most diverse list. Like yours is definitely <laughs> the most. Mine is, is probably the least diverse list, but it makes sense with my martial arts background. Yeah. Um, I like. Yeah, this is really. Uh, this is a lot of it's not stuff I would have thought of. Of Riggs, Riggs versus Joshua. I've always liked, but as I've gotten older, um, you know, yeah. uh, the quick cuts and stuff like that, and, the, and then the close ups, they don't give you a good idea of what's actually happening. Yeah, uh, in it, the middle it definitely of that fight. has that yeah. moment. That moment <laughs> and where then you can't see. with uh, Fastbender, ver- Fastbender versus Gina, uh, I love that movie. Um, one of my yeah. favorite lines from that movie is when she, she escapes from after she fucks up Channing Tatum and she escapes yes. in the car. And no. and the kid, she, the kid's like, "Who are you? Are you like a secret agent?" She goes, "No, I'm a military contractor. I work security." And he's like, "Oh, is that a real thing?" She goes, "Yeah, that's a real thing." And I was literally doing that job at the time, and I remember watching that with a bunch of my friends, and we're like, "Yeah, of course that's a real thing." You did, yeah. What the fuck? Uh, and but like, honestly, Fastbender is a great actor. He's very physical, oh, but yeah. Gina, Gina carried him in that fight. I mean, Gina, she, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. she yeah. made that look good. Gina yeah. has actually done a great job because when I first, because like I wasn't <laughs> a huge fan of her fights career, I was a fan of her her photo shoots when she was a fighter, but not a, mm. a fan of her fight oh, career. So hot, 
Um, and I thought I laughed when I heard she was pursuing acting because like her first outing wasn't really good. It was uh, Fast and Furious four or five. I don't remember. No, Haywire. Haywire is her first outing. Oh, was that well? Okay, so but like that's surprising yeah. that I didn't realize that. But I know that like, but she's actually really stepped it up and she actually took it seriously and learned the craft. Yeah. So I mean, she's they... not she's not winning any Oscars anytime soon, but nah, she probably don't want to nowadays. So it's like, did you guys know? Have you all both seen? Obviously, Chris has. I, I, uh, Russell, have you seen? Haywire? I have not seen Haywire. I'm going to have to check oh, okay. it out after listening about this. Chris, did um, you know they... they I've seen the scene because I, I watched they, a lot of these scenes leading into this. Yeah. Which uh, they, they dub her voice in that. Really? Not her, yeah, they had to dub her voice because Why? Her, voice, her voice was not low enough and she didn't enunciate correctly, so they, they, they dubbed her voice. It's still her voice, but they yeah. like remastered it so that she has this more kind of yeah the, the way that her inflection is if you watch her other she kind of has a bit of a speech impediment if you've seen her Holy in interviews shit. and that's actually in not movies, uncommon for fighters because you really? your brain rattle a lot so it, it, beca it becomes hard to speak if you can't tell huh. i'm having trouble doing it um, <laughs> and i've been i've been punched oh, yeah. in the face way less than she has so I guess it was Jack. I, I never fought well. professionally. I just, I just fought a, a amateur. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'll never forget the first concussion I got. It was it, that was an experience, man. I, I, I've always prided myself on being able to process information really fast. Mm. And it was this dude. He was a gold, a diamond gloves boxer. Just fucking nailed me. It was like, boom. Shit. All of a sudden, I was like, <laughs> and my hands were just down. He knew I was, <laughs> I was out on my feet. Yeah, I was like. Why is the world so slow? Like, it was just like I remember the interview with uh, Will Smith. You know, we're talking about Ali. He goes, "Man, the first time it's one thing. It's it's it's, it's training and stuff." He goes, "I got hit for the first time." And she's like, "Oh shit!" I was it's wearing one, headgear it's... too, and it yeah. just went. This dude, and he wasn't. He was smaller than me. He was probably I probably outweighed yeah. him by like like twenty pounds, thirty pounds yeah. maybe. And he just caught me square. Like he his his hand came right through my headgear mm. and just bah, right on. And I just went okay. I was like a bobble fucking. Yeah. Uh, like clown doll. I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm done for the day. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wes, next time I watch, I hear Warren. Now, I, now I'm gonna have to rewatch it, thinking about that. Now, <laughs> watch, yeah. yeah, watch that movie in because I bought three of her DVDs once. Sure. <clears throat> and Haywire is one of them. In the Blood was another one, and she's really yeah. good in that. Yeah. And uh, she, you can totally tell the difference in her voice between Haywire. She has a relatively voice. high pitched voice. So yeah. that's what that's yeah. one of the reasons why a lot of her early roles she didn't speak much like in uh, Deadpool. Mm. She I think she says has like maybe like four lines in that whole movie. Yeah. Um yeah. RT's blasting us in the comments. He's he's saying no love for for Born versus Dash. RT, we're not done with all the lists yet. That's just one guy's list, brother. Oh, trust still got oh. Archie, honestly, Cap versus Bucky. I trust me. I've because because Wes wanted to make this. He wanted to make this a pure <coughs> hand, he wanted to make this hand to hand combat fight because oh right. If we because trust me, things like Kill Bill popped up. You know, it's like that's, right. that's that's sword fighting. We want to make this Cap versus Bucky. Technically, there's knife fighting. I wanted to make it pure pure hand to hand combat. Right. You know what I mean, so, right. Yeah. So. Yeah, let me just uh, pull up the other list. You can keep talking. Uh, but but our, our, no, you're you're hundred percent right though. See, this is what I was talking about. Like, RT is in, you know, he's in another country. So there's going to be people that are going to, you know, they're going to come on yeah. at different times. And, like, I don't even know. RT, what is this? Is, is this a reply in the comments if you can? Yeah. Uh, what, what what time is it over there where you're at right now? What is it, like, in the morning? I think, I think it's, like, night? 13 hours behind us or something like that. <clears throat> so it's, like, he's just probably starting his day. Hmm. Uh, so let's I see. I don't even know. Second to respond. That's what yeah. said over, over the, the Gina versus Fast Punch. It felt very, it felt so real because said that, that that's how a woman a woman would fight a guy that's like bigger than her. And it's like and a woman she, with training would fight exactly a, guy. a woman yeah. with training, not that's a woman true. who just well, decides yeah. that she's the most powerful thing in the world. And all right, so yeah. here we have Wes's top five. All right, so I, I, what um, are the yeah. odds of that first one? I'm just gonna say that <laughs> I just I couldn't couldn't have guessed. <laughs> Brief overview again. That's my more my residuals for uh, you know, uh, pin pin out reacher. So yeah, uh, so we got Jack uh, versus. I mean, I don't know what you'd call them. I don't know even know what gang they belong to. Uh, in yeah. season one, I think it's episode one, isn't it, Chris? Uh, Not episode Jack, one. Uh, Jack Reacher goes against the uh, the the inmates that are going to go take him down in the bathroom. Um, it's such it. a it's such episode a visceral two. fight. 
Yeah. It's um, <clears throat> and this is really a, a running theme in all of my my picks here, really, except for one. Um, it's very visceral, very realistic, and uh, I'll touch more on it because it's obviously my number one choice for for good reason. Uh, but it's it's fucking fast. It's brutal. Um, it makes sense. Um, and I'll get more into it since you know. So we'll we'll go into depth on our favorite one. It's definitely my favorite one. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, oh, that's supposed to say that's supposed to say Hood versus Sanchez, not Good. Oh, you said uh, me Good. I did I. I? Banshee, so, my bad. My bad. Unfortunately, okay. I cannot fix that. So we'll just okay. pretend that this is an <laughs> okay. Good. It doesn't matter because it's not his real name anyway. Um, They're but, right yeah. next to each other on the keyboard. Just pretend I fucked up. Yeah, so Banshee, uh, Banshee is uh, a, a late 2010s series uh, starring uh, Anthony Starr. <clears throat> Anthony Starr from most people know him now from The Boys. Yep, he plays a ex military ex felon who just got released from prison and poses as a sheriff in a small town. And uh, he, in one of his very first episodes, I think it's episode three or four of the first season uh there's a mma fighter that has sexually assaulted a or graped as we're allowed to say on youtube yeah uh a a young woman and he's gonna go in is that the term yeah you have to say you have to say oh my god that's definitely a reference to the grapist the great one of the greatest youtube uh well i guess it's uh uh, sketches of all time i'm sorry i cut you off but that that's okay that's okay (laughs) So he goes in and in 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 order to arrest him, very it's it, it's not even reasonable that he would do this, but uh, he decides to take him on hand to hand. Um, it's it's brutal again, it's visceral again. I'm just gonna repeat that. And uh, he he is not a trained fighter, even though he's ex military, he's not a trained MMA type fighter, and so he uses a bunch of of prison tactics against yes. the guy, and it pays off later with the brilliance of that scene. Then I'll just speak on this one part is that they show a quick cut when he uses a certain move where he blocks a punch with his elbow. Yep. Um, and they show a quick cut in black and white of, of that happening. And you're not sure what you're watching at first. And then you go back and, and, and then like a couple episodes later, they show when Hood first wound up in, the, uh, uh, in prison, he goes up against this guy and that guy used that move on him. So he, he, pay, yeah. he pays it, pays it off. The fact that yeah. he used it on somebody else, a, a more proficient fighter. So anyway, exactly. and then number three, Jimmy versus Dalton. I mean, Absolutely come on, awesome. classic roadhouse. Mm. Um, I know a lot about this fight. I, I, it almost was my number one. It almost was my number one. Um, I mean, you got a trained dancer going against a professional ex fighter. Uh, I it's again, it's, even though it's more Taekwondo type fighting, um, it's definitely something that stayed with me for a long time. Um, they do a little bit too many kicks in jeans for my <laughs> for my liking, it seems. But you know what? You can tell that they're really going at it. And a quick yeah. trivia cut on that one that I found out while I was researching this is that the the guy, uh, the guy, the bad guy, Jimmy, his mm-hmm. mom stood up when they premiered the movie she stood up in the theater when he gives the line when he has uh when he has dalton in the chokehold and he says i used to yeah. fuck guys like you in prison his mom stood i remember up that and, line <laughs> his mom his mom stood up in the theater and said that's my baby boy that's my boy that's <laughs> up on the screen right there that's proud mama moment right there. i haven't so. seen that fight in so long but like parts of it just stand out like yeah and the they live, which we'll get to in a second. Those two fights, yeah. like I didn't even have to rewatch them for this. I was like, oh, I just remember they're just so good. Yeah, I, re- I yeah I rewatched all of them the other day at work uh, just to kind of get as much information as I could on them. Um, and so number four, this is a little, this is my obscure one. Uh, this is Angel versus Spike on the TV show Angel, both vampires. Um, if you've never seen the show, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. Um, yeah. But it's basically something that they both were characters on Buffy for like five or six. Yeah, five or six seasons yeah, until yeah. Angel got his own show, and then they be- they became characters on that show. Yep, and uh, they they had kind of gone against each other a couple times throughout the Buffy verse, as they call it. But um, in that episode uh, of season five, which is wound up being the final season of, of Angel, they go hardcore toe to toe, and it's 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 a really great fight. It's the first one that Spike actually wins against Angel. 
and um, sure. it has a, they do a lot of they intercut it with a lot of flashbacks and stuff, and it's it's just really well done. If you're a fan of the series, it won't make a lot of sense to you if you if you if it's apropos of nothing if you've not seen either show up to that point. Mm. But if you've been watching both shows up to that point, it's it it has a lot of meaning. And and when you have a fight like that that has a lot of and that, that's why it kind of edged into the top five yeah. right there. I've rewatched that many times. It's it's a really cool fight. Uh, and then last on the list is Nada versus Frank. Would. Of course, it is. The fact that this uh, is fifth on 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 only one of our lists just goes to show you how hard this was. Might I add? <laughs> yes, very hard to pick these. Very yeah. hard. To, um, I did a lot of research on this one. Um, oh my I god! Watched it a couple times. This was one of those late night movies I saw when I was like ten years old. Um, yeah. and I remember watching this, and I remember thinking like, uh, I gotta pee. Like this, this fight's <laughs> taking a long time. This is, it really is a long this, fight. Is this fight still going? Like, what is happening right here? And to pay it off even better, um, well, first of all, you know, not to get into too great detail because it's not my number one, but um, uh, you know, obviously, Roddy Roddy Piper is a, a is a wrestler, but you know, even though uh, uh, Keith David didn't have a lot of fight experience i mean dude's got some hands in this fight yeah. i don't i don't know who taught him i think, or... I think uh rowdy roddy piper actually helped choreograph the fight. did he yeah <coughs> so actually you... fun fact about rowdy roddy piper uh no he wasn't super close with my dad but my dad and him used to go out drinking from time to time years no ago shit. When, when my father was uh, well, sorry when uh rowdy roddy piper was like on his tours no and shit. ended up in jersey he ended up at a bar that my dad used to frequent and nice. um, they they were kind of like drinking buddies when he was in town, so it was pretty cool. <clears throat> well, Wes, the nice. uh, drinker himself has said that uh, he talked about this. He said that Keith David is act, it was actually an uh, an an amateur boxer. Oh, well, that it, makes sense. It that shows. Sense. It yeah. shows because he's definitely got some hands, and they have yeah. like two very different styles oh. of and, fighting. And, and Roddy Piper, they couldn't get a stunt double because Roddy Piper at the time was such a fucking big dude. They couldn't yeah. get a stunt double for Roddy Piper. So this was Keith David and Roddy Piper actually fucking going at it like yeah yeah back then a yeah. lot of stunt guys weren't there was a lot of actors that couldn't uh or or like you know like arnold was notorious yes. for it, roddy piper yeah. um uh obviously i mean technically they didn't need to do it because he was acting as the stunt double but lou ferrigno was was um, oh yeah it's like there just wasn't guys big enough to be their stunt doubles so they had yeah. to like yeah. you've also got um john carpenter even though he's not like a big, I mean, yeah, I, I don't even know what is he a horror film director? I'm not really sure. You know, I would call him a horror film director. That seems to be mm. his his forte. He's done yeah. other things too, yeah. but I would yeah. say he's mostly a horror film. Director. He 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 made a really good choice in doing these wide action shots. Yes, of, of the fight where you can you can cl you can clearly see it's these two guys. You know, exactly. I mean, and uh, again, like I say, it's you know, it's a little it. If I if I had any complaints about it at all, which are not much, I would say it's slightly over choreographed. You know, mm. it's it's got a little bit too much, you know, uh, choreography going on for it. But I mean, it's still brutal. And I remember, like, literally almost peeing my pants laughing while I was on guard duty in the army, <laughs> and we watched the 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 cripple fight of South Park that is seen yes. for se it is seen exactly. for scene. It is scene for scene. Even up to even Jimmy up to the Jimmy. Point <laughs> where where he tries to hit him in the nuts and he's like, you dirty motherfucker. You know? I love that fight. That, Dude, that, that whole thing. Everyone I know watched that fucking South I'm Park. laughing hysterically oh and all of my soldiers in my squad were There's younger. only one moment uh, with Timmy and Jimmy that exceeds that fight and that's when they try to join the Crips. That's the only time that it's like with with Chris, with the with, 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 with. Like, you know, like, I'm so glad. But uh, that. yeah, yeah. When you know when that came out, and and especially at the you dirty motherfucker scene, <laughs> um, and I've I've actually I've brought that into my vernacular where I say that pretty much on yeah. a weekly basis. I'll like somebody will do something sketchy or or, yeah. or whatever. I think you like, said you that dirty? to me in text I, the other day. I actually. think I have. <laughs> yeah, I think like... I. Ha I'm like you, dirty motherfucker. But anyway, so yeah, so my number one is 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 Jack uh, versus the inmates. And to go into a little greater detail, I will tell you that I don't know who he worked with. I know he's a physical actor. I know he's been in uh, Titans and a couple other things. Yes. Um. So yeah. I know that he has a good background, but. The moves that he utilizes. See, now I was a uh, an MP, but I also worked at the military prison. 
and they would teach us certain moves that would disable your enemy, not like not grapple with them because you always had one more person coming. They would teach you, you yes. can't get into it with one guy because if you go toe to toe with one guy, two or three guys are going to jump you. And in that scene, he's got what five or six guys coming at him. And yeah. everything that he does yep. is to create distance and to shut down the other person as fast as possible, whether it be to break the guy's instep in his knee or to smack a guy. He utilizes the the uh, the restroom as much as he can, whether it be yep. the sinks or the walls and things like that. He is big on using elbow strikes, yes. um, you know, using the ridge hand instead of his, you know, he doesn't do a lot of closed fist shots because anybody who's ever been in a real fight will tell you. You can break your, uh, you know, yeah, you can you break your hand, your hand yeah. really tight. Exactly. Right so there. he does a lot of elbow strikes. Yeah, watching right he now. Do, <laughs> he, he does a he does a lot of hands. I only yeah, I didn't watch strikes. it fully. I watched I a little bit of it because I was starting to run out of time, so I just kind of went fast forward. But I was yeah. like, yeah, this this is pretty good. Honestly, it's it's very similar to the first on my list. So yeah. So yeah. um and so whoever whoever worked that out, they because you know in the book. It, they don't really go into great detail on it. It's, it's, it's not something that, you know, you can really talk about. I mean, you can, you know, and it's not that kind of, of thing. That's why, that's one of the way it exceeds um, the, the show exceeds the book in, in that manner is, is when he takes yeah. these guys down. And uh, you know, ultimately, you know, it, I feel like it's believable. I've, I've read some comments on like when I've watched the Her clip West. on YouTube I'll where I'll people put the whole thing up here. As you're talking, as you're talking uh, right I, right. I've read some comments on YouTube oh, where they say, "Oh, this one guy, he couldn't do all this." Like, look, he he's not doing this. He's not taking these guys on one at a time. He's there moving. is a little bit of mook chivalry going on here. Yeah, where they're kind of attacking individually. Um, I, that's something I didn't touch on in my video that I'm going to pimp, be pimping out in a few minutes for my channel. Which is right up here. But uh, but uh, he, yeah, there is a little bit of mook chivalry going on. He he definitely. Um, he he takes the fight to them and he, yep. he he shuts them down as fast as possible. You know what I mean? Like he, you know, it whether it be you know you see those elbow again, elbow, elbow, yep. knee, drop no. the knee, drop. Yeah, the he's foot. definitely doing you know? very like sweeping. Like he's he doesn't stay in one place for a long time. Yeah, which does, exactly. Uh, which is very exactly. key to fighting multiple opponents. Granted, and, in real life, odds are your odds are very slim. You're gonna have to defeat multiple opponents, um, especially not in prison. Especially, know, especially yeah, if the guys are of comparative strength size. Um, yeah. And but none the, of those guys were small guys, yeah. you know, like no. when they, so when they, in the beginning dudes. of the scene, when they walk into the room, they, um, you know, the, the other inmates who were big dudes themselves, they were like, Oh, we don't want nothing to do with this. We're leaving, you know, which is, you know, that's where you knew something serious, uh, was about to happen. But, um, that's, um, that's what yeah, I he got. Definitely, yeah. I, I agree with you though. Like, cause what he does is he does actually separate people from the fight. Like he takes yeah. this guy and drags him here and he takes this guy and drags him here. Which right, is, he doesn't make himself him a target. From sent, being centered, yeah. which is right, good. I'm, I'm exactly. So, up, and but... you know, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna. Yeah. Hey, uh, Russ, before you start your top five, uh, yeah, I yeah, I was just pulling it up. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, talk your, amongst yourself for a second. I gotta go break the seal. Oh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but like, actually, um, I'll just I'll briefly touch on this. Um, uh, my fight series that I've been working on, I do talk about that kind of stuff. Um, where you know, attacking multiple opponents, it's it's not easy. It is possible. Yeah. It's not easy. And one of the ways to do it is you need to get like them separated from each other. Exactly. And that's something that, you know, my, as uh, I'm not going to go too in, into, I will just, I will just talk about my honorable mention here. Uh, Cause that's not really technically my list. Uh, it's uh, Jake Tyler versus Ryan McCarthy. Oh yeah. Never, never back down. Good fucking which play. is objectively a horrible movie. <laughs> Uh, because it's, it's literally it's just, um, it's just bad Karate Kid. Yeah, but <laughs> I love it, and it actually was part of my inspiration for getting into jujitsu and MMA. So that's it. All I did, Wes, was I just talked about my honorable mention. I didn't go mm. to my list yet. Um, <clears throat> love so that yeah. movie, by the way. I love. Yeah, that, that movie. was I. I you and me spoke about this the other day. Not a good movie. It's enjoyable though. No, and, yeah. it's, it's a um, shit and I went movie. To go, yeah, and it's I went a to shit go, movie. Yeah. I went to but go, it is remember, enjoyable. Yeah. I do remember saying <laughs> I went to go text you that, um, uh, yeah, you know, Amber Heard at that point, despite her craziness, was a really hot chick and like the hottest chick on the planet. She, I said, she is I, hot. But I said my autocorrect turned it into she was a really hot cock. Hold up. It's like, and then, I, then, it, then I went to go fix it and it turned into she's a hot chuck. And I was like, no, that's not correct either. Um, 
But uh, okay, so I'm gonna go in reverse order. Actually, I I should, probably should do that for everybody. So uh, Tang Loom versus Colt. I actually had to look up the names because I I always just called him Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris respectively uh, from Way of the Dragon. Um, my whole thing with this is it's not a particularly great spectacle of a fight, but it's the only time that two iconic martial arts actors were on screen like that together. And it's actually known as a fight where I am usually very critical of um, people who try to say Bruce Lee was the greatest fighter of all time. He's not. He's he, he was in great shape. He was a good martial artist for movies. Yeah. Uh, but anybody who thinks he could he could have beaten like modern martial like mixed martial artists in a, in a straight up MMA fight or out of their fucking minds. Um, but that being said, I still love all of his movies. And I love the philosophies yeah. and stuff. And those two decided in that film that they were actually going to hurt each other. Um, Cause they, uh, well, Chuck Norris is actually like, he's a legitimate, like knockdown oh, yeah. karate guy. Uh, yeah. So he, they were like, if you go back and watch when they kick each other, they're actually hitting each other. There was no sure. pullback on the hits. Um, yeah. They're obviously the, the winner was determined by the script, but they were actually attacking each other like solid. Hey, Ruff, uh, so do you think Chuck Norris could actually beat Bruce? That I'm not sure. I personally think he probably could have, um, yeah. but I can sure. see argument either way. The, neither yeah. of them were professional fighters, uh, so mm -hmm. like they were both kind of. But like I do know that there's more actual credentials for Chuck Norris, mm -hmm. who actually also has a jiu-jitsu black belt, so he's better. He's been a better grappler than me. So, yeah. um, also it's military. Yes, he's actually pretty much done it all. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, Chuck's a beast. Yeah, and 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 he's and he did it all while having no soul because he's a ginger. So, uh, so um, this, one is, this one uh, is a little bit of a crossover with your list, Chris, but not exactly the same fight. Neo versus Smith from the Matrix, which yeah. I personally believe is one of the best choreographed fights of all time, oh. considering the fact that um, Hugo Weaving has like zero fight training and exactly. they really played it well to his strength. He didn't have to do a lot of crazy shit because the way the character was written, he was able to just, you know, kind of be the powerhouse. Exactly. And the speed was the effects of the movie. Yep. Um, yeah, don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm speeding through this. I know yeah. it's getting late. <laughs> uh, Kurt Sloan versus Tong, uh, Tong Po from Kickboxer. Anybody who's good... oh my ever God. seen Kickboxer, this Dude. is... Everyone always points to Bloodsport as being, like, John Claude Van Damme's best movie, but I don't agree with that. Yeah, I think Kickboxer is it. I think like that fight to this day. I can actually zoom in a little bit here, so that way people can read it a little. Bit Are better. we talking when you say John Claude Van Damme's best movie? We're we talking like fight movie. His fight movie, talking? like fight. His sorry, I should rephrase so. that. His best fight in a movie. A lot of people hard, say Hard Targets is best movie. Dude, no, I, I meant I meant like, I love um, hard target. His best fight <laughs> is what lie. I was trying to say. Uh, but a lot of people like talk to talk about Bloodsport. But I always default to Kickboxer. I think it's a fantastic fight. I think the way it's done is just there's a lot of um, first of all there's there's a lot of emotion to the fight. If you know the story of the movie with his brother being killed and all that, there's sure, you know, know. Let's say that again. I'm sorry, I, I know that. Wow. Yes. Well. Well. No. I don't mean his real life boxer. Oh, <laughs> his real life, the movie. The, his real life brother is the movie. So like, there's a lot of emotion to the fight because in the story, his brother gets killed by Tom Po. Uh, some spoilers, I'm sorry if you haven't seen a movie from the A's. Um, yeah. So, like, there's a storyline which is very integral, you know, like having, uh, like, like I say in my upcoming video, which I hope you all watch, all four of you, um, uh, a fight scene requires that it tells a microcosmic story. So, the story of itself has right to here. have a beginning, middle, and end. Yep, yes. Right there. Yep. Oh, lost you a little bit there. Yeah. It's. Okay. Honestly, like anybody should watch this fight scene if you, for just good, like good Very fight good. cinematography. It's got fantastic story behind it. All four of the C's that I talk about go behind into this. So, yeah, it's like the, the choreography is it might not be pristine, perfect uh, Muay Thai, but yeah. by movie standards, it's fucking fantastic. Um, yeah, so good. My number yeah. two is I just happen to pick one of the Rocky movies. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, honestly, any one of these would have been fine. Oh, it just happens yeah. to be my favorite uh, fight. Not my favorite Rocky movie, but my favorite fight from a Rocky movie is versus Drago in four. 
Uh, I don't think I have to say much, you know, like they kind of made a lot of things, uh, a lot of techniques that are, were used for those movies are still used to this day. Yeah. Uh, except for the first one, which had that whole unique rever- filming it in reverse thing, mm-hmm. which I probably will do a video on one day. <laughs> uh, and my number one, I know I sped through that because I know we're getting close to that, to that old dusty trail. But my number one is the hallway fight from Daredevil. Now, this is a amazing. bit of a recency bias since I'm doing an entire video on it. Yeah. Uh, but and having watched it like 75 times in the last two weeks. So good. Oh, but shit. it's really, honestly, it has a little bit of everything in it. And yeah. that's the, I will transition that. I will save my talking about a specific fight for when I talk about my project. So that way we can kind of save a little time here. Now, Russ, I got to say that, like, I do love Rocky for a fight. It's so fantastic. But then then I heard but recently Stallone talk about the whole, like, you hear about the whole real life situation where, like, <laughs> where he, he dislodged his heart. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've, uh, <laughs> I've known about that for a while. Where uh, I heard that like a year ago. I'm like, really? I so, just, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I zoned out there for a second. Um, the, uh, a lot of people don't know this about Dolph Lundgren. He's actually a legitimate Kyokushin black belt. Yeah, which he's, a geni- is... he's a genius too. Yes, he's got um, 180 IQ or some shit. Like, dude, but uh, Kyokushin <laughs> is actually like the most brutal form of karate. It's shit. the it's like it it's the the mo it's a knockdown style that uh, emphasizes really like high head like like high impact like head kicking yeah uh it's the guys who win what's called the sabaki challenge which is like pretty much the real life blood sport uh like it's the or like that tournament that's in um cobra kai that they're kind of like gearing up towards oh yeah uh that's really the sabaki challenge is the real version of that uh kyokushin guys are always the dudes that win that actually my sidebar old- sidebar real quick uh what do you guys are, are you guys uh is everybody on i know chris is is everybody on uh, board with uh, the next season of Cobra Kai should be the last season? Yes, I agree. It, it has to end because now they've they've gotten to a point now where they're yeah. not going to go any further with the story. It's, See, it, ha- I, it has to end. I'm always biased because I, I I watched 15 seasons of Supernatural. So like if they had if they had 30 seasons, of, like I, I'm such a fan of Cobra Kai. Like if they had 30 seasons of Cobra Kai, I'd watch every fucking season. Like, <laughs> Unfortunately, it has a shelf life. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of show. It it's, has it's, a... it's like Breaking Bad. I, I understand Breaking Bad had to end at five seasons, but I was such a fan of Breaking Bad. If they would have had thirty seasons of Breaking Bad, I would I would have kept going. But I yeah, but that. it's it's that it's that law of diminishing returns, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's like that you can only milk it for so long. Again, that's that's why I, I never yeah. got into Supernatural because I was like, is this fucking show still on? I just, like, I, there's I, nothing, there's nothing that can be, you know. And how many chicks have we all dated that are into Grey's Anatomy? Uh, what are oh they season God, yeah. 27 on Grey's Anatomy yeah. right now? Like Jesus Christ, come on, man! Like it's yeah. It, it, oh. it, I only I only mentioned it just just to say this, which is just you're it, just it's, making it's, fun it's, of me. <laughs> I think because it's I've just, it's, me that in the past, so. it's a it's a shame <laughs> with the Cobra Kai just because I I think that now a lot of the people that are on the show are getting the main character wise are getting better. At martial arts, like the that's, kids and stuff. That's what I'm saying, Wes. Like, dude, season I, five was so fucking good. Well, I'm like, I don't want. One of the I, I don't want to end. <laughs> one of the problems with that show is that the the, the actors are aging out of the characters, and yeah. it's hard. It's becoming increasingly yeah. difficult yeah. to take it seriously. Yeah. His fucking son was a toddler in the first season, and then he's like a fucking teenager in the third. Yeah, season. like, like so. what's her name? Um, uh, Peyton, what's her character? Uh, the um. What's, I can't remember. It's Peyton, whatever. Uh, she's the main evil. Peyton List. Peyton List. She mm. said it recently. She's like, I'm like twenty. Uh, I, I've got the. Like, she's like twenty four, and she's like, I'm playing a sixteen year old. Like, how much more yeah. can I do this? Yeah. You know, and like, mm. it, it, it's like she was like she did like a whole interview about how it like negatively affects her life because like yeah the like you know she's on a show and money's great and all that stuff but it's like people think yeah. she's a sixteen year old. <laughs> like, you know, I don't yeah. think anybody's. It, she's the one that plays uh, the the the. Uh, Tori, right? Tori, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody thinks she's a fucking teenager. I well, mean, not anymore, but there was those, a point where those Wonder Twin powers have activated as of season two, <laughs> and those those sweater kittens she's got are just oh, like, amazing. Holy mother of memories! <laughs> hey, but yeah. Do you um, see, 
See how <laughs> see see how Chris's accent starts popping. Chris's accent starts coming in as he gets drunker. <laughs> He's True. like, "Yo, I'll watch Cobra Kai until of twenty fifth season." Hey yo, I, uh, hey, hey yo. Yeah. My fa- my favorite thing is to do the um uh, uh the Aqua Teen Hunger Force um mm. uh Carl. Hey yo, how you doing? Uh, hey, Carl Pachana Um yeah. uh, Maybe it doesn't uh, matter. None of this matters. <laughs> like, that. But yeah. um, and it's funny because everybody in in like Jersey knows that guy. Everybody knows Carl Carl yeah. from fucking Aquatine Hunger Force. <laughs> Hey, it's Rush their neighbor. Up. Everybody has a neighbor that's Carl. Yeah. No, so you... that's, a, that's some good list here, although RT just gave us some shit that we didn't yeah. put any of the Punisher fights on there. RT, I swear to God, buddy. They were Don't so worry, close. dude. You, ha- you oh, gave us oh, like 45 so lists to make. And honestly, I, I wish we had a little <clears throat> more time, but we're up against yeah. the clock because our gracious, yeah. our, 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 our overlord went a half hour later than we... Actually, he wasn't even supposed to go today. I know. So Bastard. I'm a little pissed at that. How dare you? A fucking, <laughs> how dare he create I, entertainment? I I knew in the back of my mind that it was going to. I, and and as I, soon as Gary, as soon as I, Gary showed up, I'm like, ah, uh, that just added 30 minutes dude, onto the fucking. Clock I could right tell there. you, I knew for, in in my heart, like in my, the deepest pit of my stomach, even that when I set that date, I was like, something's gonna happen where Drinker's gonna do something yeah. that's gonna take every, yeah. it's gonna take the wind out of our sails. You know, <laughs> yeah. we could have had well, like. I'm not kidding. We could have had like nine people today. Like nine, nine, nine whole people. <laughs> yeah, we've had we've averaged about six. So we're doing that. Honestly, that's considering not the fact bad. That a lot of people just sat through three hours of of Gary yeah. Androtic talking. <laughs> Boy, and Gary, Gary loves the sound of his own voice, doesn't he? I mean, Jesus Christ! Some I actually don't mind him so much. There's a, there's some guests that it's, Drinker it's brings on down. that I'm not a yeah. fan of, but Gary he, he, Gary reminds me of every dude in the joint that uh, would would be like an ex-junkie that became sober and he's just like so sure <laughs> about his opinion Dude, about I've stuff. No, I've known some of those guys. <laughs> like he's so, he's like a mix between that and the fucking guy from The Simpsons, the comic book guy. Like oh actually, the, actually the, uh, that um, did not happen that's until me, season me. two of Battlestar yeah. Galactica, sir. That's me I, in real life. I, this, I do this is a facade. I'm actually that guy. That you just I, I do respect Gary's knowledge, though. Like, like, I'll listen to Gary talk about how. No, he's again. knowledgeable. Yeah, he's yeah, knowledgeable, he, he but he just that. he's yeah. he's. He, I mean, I, I I actually would prefer if he was back on dope. You, you know how I know on. I'm that guy. I stood in line for four hours for oh, this, shit. and it's just a reprint of a comic that came out thirty years ago, and I stood in line yeah. for two hours to get it. Yeah. So, Understandable. All right, so let's uh, let's let's start to uh, like wind it down here. This last little winding it down. Our, talk about our personal projects and try to get this done by ten. Because yeah, I think that's a good. Well, I guess it's not uh, nine for you, but um, yeah, that's fine. I'm in the middle. Um, I so uh, I guess uh, Chris, you go first. Ten o'clock. Uh, personal projects. Yeah. So like uh, Drinker would say, because like Russell and Wes, you've seen this. I sent Drinker my super chat and everybody has their one video. And I've always said for me, I'm humble, you know, as as Russ and uh, Very Wes would so. be. You know, I, I never made a YouTube channel expected to get more than five views. I'm checking my phone. Hey, Chris, you got 100 views. OK, two days later. Hey, Chris, you got 500 views. Okay. Hey, Chris, you got 1,000 views. And my sister was like, holy shit, my, my, my fucking brother got 3,000 views shitting on Lord of the Rings. So I'm like, you know what? If people like this, you know, next Thursday, I'm going to binge the entire season of The Wheel of Time because, as we said with Amazon, Amazon makes Invincible, they make Jack Reacher, but then they make The Wheel of Time. And I've read every single Wheel of Time book. It is by far the worst. It's it is it's just as bad as Rings of Power. But if people want to see me fucking binge an entire shitty shitty TV season, fuck it, I'll do it next week. You know, so I'm gonna binge the entire Wheel of Time, get a whole fucking bottle of Jack Daniels, and who knows, maybe I'll get ten thousand views. I but, wish you the best of luck because yes. if your channel succeeds, <laughs> mine will do better as well. So I, I hope you do great. I, and I, I was <laughs> expecting, as you can imagine, with the drinker, because Wes has seen this and you've seen this, Russ, where it's like sometimes on Twitter, was it drink this po- drinker just fucking Twitter? Uh, he put down like, what was it? Um, Multiverse of Madness. 
got fucking some awards and drinker's like no th this multiverse man is his shit and people on twitter are like oh drinker because all your people in in, in your cult following and like 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 they're they're clamoring to your your bullshit. It's like no, Multiverse Madness fucking sucked. It, Mueller did a Mueller did a five hour video breaking. That was down. one of my favorite things to listen to because I didn't have to actually watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's but, it's fucking terrible. But in all honesty, Shit. though, like I mean, I will say this: there are, and I've said this a few times in our like uh, admin group uh, chat that there are a few people in the drinker you like fandom that are questionable individuals in terms of their motivations for why they follow him. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, I think uh, he just kind of appeals to, I wouldn't call it yeah. like, you know, I wouldn't say that people are like, um, you know, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, like, they're fanatics. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Um, but like, I think they're just people for the most part who are just fed up with bad entertainment. Yes. So, and and I, I, that was what got me into him was I didn't know how to express my anger towards what modern entertainment was. Yeah. modern audiences if you will yeah um so I think, I think he gives that's... i think he gives an outlet to a lot of us that are that are doing that i think he yeah. again <clears throat> like i said I, I i i he is uh yeah um he's he's i keep using this term switched on it's kind of a london-based term mm. <clears throat> but it's it, he's he's keyed into the fact that <clears throat> there's something wrong with a lot of the entertainment that goes on yes. and he knows how to verbalize it being yes. the master of prose that he is. And yes. again, he knows how to speak. He knows, he knows uh, what these issues are, you know, cause a lot of people will look at something, you know, I mean, you can, you can listen to your car making a noise and, and you're not a mechanic. You don't know ex exactly what's wrong with it. Yeah. But, you know, somebody who, who knows engines, they might go, Oh, well, you know, Hey, that's your flux capacitor right there. That's what's messing up. Right. You yeah. Know, I'm going to modify you know, I, that, but I'm stealing that for a video. Just so yeah, you're aware. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, that's what he's able to do. He's, he's able to bring that out to the fore and he's able to verbalize that in such a manner uh, in, in which that you, you understand what it is that he's saying. It's almost like he's, he's speaking, he, he's speaking for all of us that are just going, listen, man, I just want to be entertained. You know, yeah. I just want to see something cool. You yeah. know, I don't need you preaching to me. I don't need you to tell me, uh, you know, where I'm, what, you know, what recycling I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to save the earth and how I'm supposed to, you know, give up half of my income to, you know, help out this foreign country and stuff like that. I want, I, I just want to see a movie where it has yeah. tits and ass and somebody's beating somebody up and, you know, a protagonist goes through a, a journey and a character uh, it, arc. A character arc, you know, exactly. and and they uh, yeah. come out the other side. I mean, it's it's super simple. It's not complicated. Exactly. Um, I said it, something similar on the happy hour where I said I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something along the lines of like you've kind of given people like me and us, in, uh, you know, like a way of expressing ourselves. Like you've given right. us a way. Uh, you've given, and I and I say this tongue in cheek because it's usually a term that's used for like people who are downtrodden. Because I wouldn't say we're downtrodden, uh, but. You know, it's a voice to the voiceless because like, quite literally, like a lot of us have no idea how to speak on yeah. what yeah. we're seeing. So exactly. it's, it's quite literally giving us the words that we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. No, it's like, like ever since Will, I forgot which, uh, which my first video was watching him, but I'm sitting, I think it was me last Jedi, but I'm, I'm as like, like, that was West, mine too. like, like Wes Morris would say. I'm watching more videos. I'm like, damn, was it this dude? Like, I'm watching these these movies and these TV shows. I'm like, why are they so, why are they so garbage for? It? And this is a guy who is he's explaining why they're such shit for. I'm like, holy crap! And you're seeing this as as a month, two months, six months, a year goes by. He's getting hundred thousand hundred thousand views. He's getting a million fucking followers. That's he's what getting... quality does too, because his exactly. videos. I mean, yeah. his early early videos. I mean, he'll even he'll, he even admits they're oh shit. yeah. Um, exactly. but like, you know, like quality is where it was. That's why I told you, Russ, like even the drinker himself would say that he, he, I can imagine Will, Will would get a video that does 5 million views. He looks back and three years ago, he goes, damn, I kind of did shit. But yeah. Will, Joe Rogan, Howard Stern, all these big name people, they would always, even Joe Rogan said, guys, I can't go back and listen to my old podcast because I kind of did shitty. So yeah. like I would say with you, Russ, it's like, yeah. don't, don't yeah. overanalyze it. Cause even Will himself, Will's at 1.5 million subscribers. He goes, yeah, yeah, some of my videos weren't the best, but like, don't overanalyze it. Just, just, right. fucking, just I'm actually at that right. point with mine currently where I'm like, I'm yeah. like, I got to get this to market. 
I, yeah. if I keep worrying about it being perfect, it will never come out. That's what exactly. I'm saying with me. It's, it's exactly. like now, it's like now me having my, my walk of power. I got the, it's, for most people, 3,000 views isn't shit. When I, when I made this video, that's, no, 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 no. I, do, do not knock that's, that. That's what I'm saying. 99% of the world will never get 3,000 views. Exactly. So don't yeah. knock your that's number. Down. But, but for me, it's like I, I did no bullshit, guys, between you two and anybody listening. I, and I said this in my video, in my, my, my uh, first 100 video, I never thought that five people would watch watch my shit the fact that i got three thousand now i'm just like now i'm re-watching now i'm listening to like well chris you could have said this different this different 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 it's like dude don't overanalyze it just do it in the past exactly and but 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 like will hit the drinker himself would say that guys don't overanalyze it just do it if you come from a place of generalization where it's like you are passionate about this people will come to follow you and the drinker himself that's what like wes would say before the drinker made his channel i looked at youtube as like fucking cat videos as like fucking pewdiepie it wasn't fucking, until like, relatively recently that it changed like that now it's a it g- legitimate source of it because uh, i felt like i felt like youtube was like some fuck some asshole playing dead space screaming like a fucking bitch or like some guy like angry joe angry joe is like i'm angry and i hate like last of us i'm screaming for a half hour nobody articulated the way will would articulate with his reviews so it's i never took youtube seriously well, but i mean, I, feel, I wouldn't say know? that nobody did but there's definitely a um yeah he that kind of group that like yeah ha, they all kind of do that i would argue drinker probably does it the best mm. mauler does it in a much different way whereas neurotic yeah. does it in a different way some of the people he's brought on i'm not really fans of i, I agree um, with that one but, yeah. yeah um like but i will say this uh before we tr- transition to west Dankrish. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, I'm not gonna say Drinker that. has his finger on the pulse of does. things that make sense at the time. Yeah. And I've said this to him that there was no more genius moment I've ever seen from him than when he knew no one was going to listen to his criticism about She Hulk. So, what the fuck did he do? Yep. He brought on four women and yep. let them do it for him. Yes. Yeah. That was the most genius thing yeah. I've ever seen somebody do. And yeah. I said, I said this on Facebook once. One dude's like, "Oh, with the fucking drinker, the this guy does reaction videos and his blah blah." I'm like, "Dude, She Hulk, right? Come, episode one comes out. I'm like, this guy criticized She Hulk. He had four what, at the time four million fucking views of, yeah. of how bad She Hulk was. The actual show couldn't get four million fucking viewers. Yeah. That's how bad your fucking show is. And this guy, oh, I didn't oh, have to watch the show because of him. That's basically it, how I felt. Exactly now, if I so. if this channel does take off. That's a negative. I'm gonna yeah. have to start doing that shit. And, and, and he would say <laughs> himself, that "This is like this, you, me, Wes, and stuff like like when Avatar two comes out, right? I'm gonna sit there. I'm gonna fucking leave my house, go to the theater. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop freaking twenty bucks. I'm not getting paid by James Cameron. I'm not getting paid by fucking Warner Brothers or Disney, whatever. If I say this, well, film, yeah, that'd be a really bad business model. You know? if they paid you to go give them <laughs> views. That'd be a horrible. Business exactly. Model. But but that's the point. Is like people like fucking Will and the like. Is like they they come from a place of people." Who are uh, our average fucking people that are mm-hmm. spending their money, and, and it's coming from a place of like I, I'm actually serious in in general. You know, it's like I care about this shit. So yeah, that's so it. Feels like Will is the kind of person where, and you guys seen this shit? He just interviewed the, this guy fucking Thomas Marston there, who's like worked with James Cameron. He's worked with Sylvester Stallone. He's making a lot of fucking moves because people are seriously sick of this shit. You know? Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, that that's my current project is now after seeing, like, you know, said for me, I didn't expect to get five views. I got 3000 views of me tearing apart Lord of the Rings. Fucking next time I'm going to sit there. I'm going to watch the entire season of the wheel of time and drink an entire pot of vodka and see, you know, what, guys, I'm, I'm was... excited for this. Don't, <laughs> yes. don't give me too many details because I want, I, yeah. I, I like so uh, let's that, let but, Wes have a, a few minutes but, here. I well, real, quick, real quick, real oh, quick. I, I did, I did by Dark Harvest. So I finished Dark Harvest. This is the, a book by Will Jordan, and he actually on Patreon. AKA he, the critical drinker, you can say who he is. On, on Patreon, he said he's like honestly, he wants to see my video. He was dude, I want to see how you feel about my my book. So I'm gonna send him honest criticism. Of course, I loved it, go. but so yeah, that's my current project. I would say that uh, for your do, don't don't not say the bad things. Because yeah. he would actually be a person who would be upset if you didn't say that. So. No, but truth be told, though, I actually thought it was a really good fucking book. <laughs> I'm thinking about buying the audiobooks for my commutes because I just, like I said, I'm actually uh, canceling my Sirius XM subscription. I'm canceling a lot of subscriptions because this economy sucks. Um, yeah. Well, let's let Wes talk about his, his book for a little bit. Yeah. I know you I already mean, touched on it a little here. bit before. See? Look. Nice. Well, Jordan, yes. so. I know you already yeah. touched on your book a little earlier, but just give us a few more details before we uh, um. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so it's set it's set in the Midwest. Um, you know, it's the protagonist. It's called Slapdash. Okay, and uh, cool yeah, um, I got that from uh, my performance reviews when I was in the military. Uh, a recurring, they kind of copy and paste them. You mm-hmm. get a monthly review when you're a sergeant, and uh, a lot of the recurring thing that I would get was Sergeant Kelly is. Uh, extremely adept uh at training and uh, you know he does great he's got a great pt test um he's excellent with his soldiers but he has a slapdash approach to you know military jurisprudence and things like that slapdash meaning uh kind of haphazard and flies by the seat of your pants yeah which that, I, word's got, that word kind of sounds like that yeah i i never took that as an insult <clears throat> so um anyway so i thought there'd be a good name for the book um it's it's about this guy uh his his name's jimmy his uh he's uh, you know he's a poor kid his dad was a criminal <clears throat> he grows up joins the military becomes a military intelligence guy um some stuff happens in his personal life and he winds up getting discharged after he catches a couple felonies and uh, does some time in the joint uh when he gets out uh he can't really get a good job so he winds up working at a bar in kansas city and uh living in a small town in lawrence kansas and uh he does a lot of like odd jobs for biker gangs for the mob things like that you know has a slapdash approach to everything that he's doing he's got a stepdaughter that's a private investigator and he works for her as a consultant because he can't get a license because he's a felon um and uh he I like I know up... this guy's story. Yeah, it sounds saying, familiar. Right? It sounds familiar. very familiar to like a to guy something. I might know. Yeah, <laughs> might know live, he might live a little west of me, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. a little bit. So uh so uh it's basically just uh the uh MacGuffin of the story is that the mob is deep into a kind of uh power war with uh, the local biker MC that's kind of running, running the Midwest. And uh, they, they've, they put all of their information of where all their dead drops are, where all their money is and the people that they blackmail onto a hard drive. And they thought that was going to be a good way to blackmail certain politicians and stuff like that. Well, winds up getting lost. Somebody snags it. So now the biker gang wants it. The mob wants it back and the feds want it. Well, the feds still have Jimmy under their, their thumb a little bit because he's on probation. And they basically say, you're, you're going to get it for us. And of course, the biker gang who kind of run the bar that he works at is like, hey, you need to get this for us. And the mob who he has sort of peripheral ties with is like, hey, we're going to give you a certain amount of money. We're going to put you on this. We want you to get this for us. So that that basically is the the crux of the story. That's that's the big MacGuffin, and and he goes in a few different adventures. It's it's very gritty. It's very Kansas City. It's very uh, you know Midwest, uh, yeah, and like uh, it, like it's it's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Um, I've shopped it around a little bit. I've gotten a little bit of uh, feedback. Uh, I wanted to get with Penguin. I think I'm going to take the drinker's advice. He did a video about, you know, what you want to do if you want to be an author. And yeah, he sure. said, you know, the best thing to do is try to get yourself an agent, have a few books ready and get yes, yourself an yeah. agent and do it that way. So I think I that's have... anything. You should have a portfolio yeah. good to go with anything, whether it be editing movies, whether it be, uh, you know, writing, uh, acting, anything portfolio yeah. ready to go you know yeah so uh during the time when i was locked up i did write three books and i've polished them up since i've been on the outside okay, nice. so i've got those nice. i'm working on a fourth so if i can find an agent that's willing to work with me um he also indicated that uh you know you want to have some kind of experience with what you're talking about in this most latest yes. video he said yeah. something like you know if you're, if you're gonna write books about ex-military people like maybe you want to be an ex-military person you know, it kind of pisses yeah. me off a little bit because I wanted to make my main character an MP, but I can't because Jack Reacher exists. You know, <laughs> well, you could have. You just probably you would have had direct competition with something. Yeah, you know, with, and then yeah. and then, but you know, there's also um, there's another author that does. Uh, he's got an MP as his main character, and then you got a third author who I'm who I like named John Sanford. He has an MP that's his an ex MP 
that's a detective. So it's it's been done. So I figured, well, I'll just switch him to military intelligence and then have him, be, you know, be a contractor and everything that's, else. That's, is, you know. that's a that's a pretty good switcheroo there. I think yeah. I think military intelligence actually does open up a lot of opportunities uh, to go. I think so too. I I, yeah. I think so MP too. kind of like whereas you have that knowledge base, it does kind of pigeonhole you. Uh, so I think you made a good decision there. You're going to have to do more research on on for it, but I think that that's you know you actually have like a you already have three books done, so you're I'm sure you yeah. have it ready. Just curious, Wes, was someone like you who actually has like military um police experience? Now, someone like uh, Lee Child, though, is is Lee Child a good writer because he has military experience, or like how does that work out? Well, Lee Child doesn't have any military experience. Lee Child was a a TV commercial director. Um, so then, he, so then how, so how is, how is he a good writer versus someone like you who's actually been there? Uh, well, I don't think it's necessarily you have yeah. to have the experience. It just helps. It, okay. I, I think it helps. I mean, you know, you have somebody like Tom Clancy. Um, mm. He's he's good to a certain degree, but he gets like over technical. There's another author named Stephen Hunter who's he's okay. ex army, but he his main characters are all ex marines. Um, yeah. So, or well, they're marines. You're not supposed to say ex marines, but. You know, yeah, um, you want so some marine, like always a marine, always yeah. a marine. So you know, it could be like that. You know, it really just depends on you know. Will has what? What is Will's? His main characters are ex spooks and stuff like that. So yeah, I, you know, I, I unfortunately don't know much about his books. Yeah, so I mean, he does I mean a lot to of check that. them out, but I just, I like I said, I'm probably going to end up using them as, as driving material yeah. in the future. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, other than that, you know, I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to have that. I mean, you don't don't have to you know you can you can put whatever you want into it i've never been in military intelligence so yeah. you know but um the rest of it is is pretty much the same thing so you know look, yeah. as far as that goes it doesn't it, it doesn't have to be super uh, technical you know if, if it's going to be yeah. something that's going to pull you out of the story you don't want that so um and you know to speak on you guys's conversation that you had real quick before we move forward um, you know, I completely yeah, I'm, I'm, agree. I'll, I'll, I'll play the. Uh, I'll, I'll finish it up for us at the end of this. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. You know, I didn't. I I originally wrote Slapdash back in 2013 on my first bid, and um, the reason it's been sitting in a Footlocker for so long was because I would read people like Lee Child or Stephen King, mm. and and I would go, "Oh my God, I, I I can't compare to these guys. What am I even doing with this?" And I wound up reading. Yeah. Stephen King's on writing manuscript, uh, or not manuscript, but uh, his uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the word? I can't believe I can't think of manifesto. No, yeah. his uh, yeah, his his uh, his book about himself. Um, oh, autobiography. He talk, auto, yeah, and he and he mm. talks about like how uh, you know he he sat on his stuff for a long time because he didn't think it would be any good compared to. Bram Stoker or yeah. you know VC Andrews or, or whatever and and his wife had told him hey you just got to be the writer that you want to be you can't keep comparing yourself to other people so yeah. you know yeah, I mean I, I completely uh, yeah, yeah be you do your thing yeah there's we'll there's always gonna that. be a, you know yeah. someone's always gonna want what you got so that's, it's that's it actually was, a, good, a good transition yeah. point for me but go on yeah. Chris you can say what you're no, say, it, it was just scary for me because I mean I mean my first my first ever video like uh, um a breakdown predator and of course I watch because I think Will's a fucking genius I watch Will's uh breakdown predator like 50 fucking times so I'm telling myself that damn how can I compare it to a guy like I get like 20 views versus a guy who's got like 4.6 million views and like how do I compare it to like this guy you who's don't got... that's the thing is yeah, yeah. Here, let me you, tell you something I can understand that you you, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do yeah I'm yeah. gonna tell this is something and then I'll I'll I, I'm very briefly going to say about my video this is something I tell people in the jiu-jitsu world all the time because people always start at the same time let's say all three of us started uh jiu-jitsu class at the same time yeah I'm going to progress different than Chris, who's going to progress different than Wes. Yeah. Um, don't, if I compare myself to Chris or Wes, I'm doing myself a disservice. I always mm -hmm. say, look at yourself from six months ago. Yeah. If you look at yourself from six months ago and you think you can kick the shit out of that guy, you're doing something right. You're going the proper direction. Good if point. you think that guy can kick the shit out of you right now, yeah. you're doing something wrong. And that's the way you have to look at it. Same thing with YouTube, same thing with anything, writing, anything. Yeah. That philosophy applies. If this person that you were six months ago or three, set your, set your, how, whatever your interval is, uh, you know, is inferior to the person you are right now, you are moving in the proper direction. Mm. So, um, I'm, I'm just going to touch briefly only because 
my project is about to come out, so I don't want to talk too much about it. I'm going to talk very briefly. <laughs> uh show it as i've said well as i've said a couple of times in this stream i'm a trained fighter multiple disciplines uh mostly grappling but i have had some background in striking and um i was really looking for something to do that i had an expertise in kind of similar to what you were saying wes where if you're going to talk about something you probably should know what the fuck you're talking about so after doing using after completely using the drunk posting group as my own market research department for a while. I, um, I determined that people wanted to hear about fight scenes. I saw people bringing up fight scenes a lot, yeah. talking about them. And I was like, well, fuck it. Why don't I just break down a fight scene or two or 10 or however many it takes. And so, uh, I did, a, I put out a question and I asked, Hey, what would people want to see? Uh, I got a pretty good response. Some people gave me multiple things, uh, but the one that got the most, uh, suggestions probably about like three or four people said it was uh, the Daredevil hallway fight, which was the first first one on my list. Yeah. And I decided, fuck it, I, I learned how to edit. It's my first soiree into this universe, and I I honestly have become. It was supposed to come out like two weeks ago, but I kept getting better at the editing and getting yeah. getting better at. It. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm like, no, I have to release this. I can't sit on it any longer. Hmm. And uh, it will actually be coming out probably tomorrow, if not Saturday. I just have to put one last little touch on it. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing where this uh, if this video becomes my uh, what is it my Rings of Power video like yours was. Chris, yeah, you know, <laughs> um, I think it. I, I don't. I don't know if it will, but I think it has at least the potential to be something that I can take and do a few other things with. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, R RTNZ, thank you uh, for the uh, – you said all the best for the books, Wes. Yes, that, yes, buddy. RTNZ, RRTNZ. I don't – he yeah. has never answered my question what the difference between the RR and the R is. <laughs> I don't know what that stands for, but he is probably one of the coolest dudes I've ever talked to. He yeah, is, he's, a, he's a great dude. So he said Chuck beats Bruce 100%. He was an MP in Korea. Hey, man, that's awesome. Yeah, and the Air Force, they don't call them MPs, though. They call them SPs. Yeah. I am um, – going to say that we probably should call this today we've actually gone about 50 minutes longer than i thought we were going to and it, we were a half hour behind to begin with so um okay. thank you guys for being part of this we'll do it again in probably about three weeks awesome, i'm going to offset it so it's not the same week as a open bar yeah no. uh, so we don't have the is same it, problem you guys <laughs> being both on his patreon is there any way to know that because you guys he usually, he usually was that. just always doing every other week yeah. and then this week was weird um yeah. of course it was the week i set for this so yeah uh, but yeah, um, we will talk a little bit offline and uh, <laughs> figure it out. And I'll yeah. probably and anybody who listens to this after, if you have a suggestion for a topic, yeah. besides, just throw it in besides drinking, I for me this is uh, uh, Russell two hours and fifty minutes. I had a shitload of fun. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll do it by. again, and exactly. hopefully we'll next time, ho hopefully next time it's a little less chaotic. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's what no makes problem. it fun, dude. It's it's so chaotic. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, comment, like, comment, and subscribe. Right. And all that, that bullshit else. that get, that does anything. I mean, all, all that yeah. YouTube, all that YouTube bullshit. Yeah. And uh, I'll post this our, on the uh, drunk posting group. Yeah. Uh, later if you're tonight. seeing this from some other wait. source, we do have the uh, Facebook drunk posting group. Um, I'll put yeah. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description, and then I will put this on the group, so it'll be across. And then I'll yeah. probably uh, and I'll see about downloading it for you, Chris, for your channel. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been fun, guys. You have yeah. a nice night, and I will talk to you later. Later on. Awesome. Drinker. <laughs> All right, guys.